Introducing Coco Golf Signature Shoe. More than just a tennis shoe, it's a fusion of 90s inspired style and cutting edge performance technology. With its sleek mid cut silhouette, it's designed to enhance speed and power on the court. The multi piece upper construction delivers high energy return for players of all levels. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, the Coco CG1 empowers you to dominate the game. Learn more and purchase the Coco CG1 at NewBalance.com. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale. With Hot Buys, your choice of colors starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases. And shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval. No minimum purchase required. Minimum monthly payment down payment tax and delivery may be required see store for details what's up it's your boy the ted smith from the men's room and did you know i have a podcast well i do the podcast new episodes uploaded every wednesday on the odyssey app unfortunately what you're about to hear is real the members of this radio program are simply not that bright or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. Kicks. <laughs> The Trippers, the Grasshoppers, the Hip Ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the Men's Room. And away we go. Welcome to season 19, episode number 4060. Along with Steve the Thrill Hill, The Ted Smith, and my car. Montgomery! And you are the men's room. On tap today, once again, we play Big Dummy. Dummy. Ted's meat and potatoes enjoy some southern cooking. We will play Profile This, plus headlines, a men's room shout of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV Time with T. Clack, clack. Drink in the dark. All right, here we go to Germany, where man's best friend is not a man's best friend anymore. Some people want to know when it comes to church. Can I dress like a whore? <laughs> Believe it or not, if uh, not for leap year, we'd have Christmas in July. California holds an auction if you're looking to get high. And Zillow announces it's expensive. To live in Seattle. What? That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, today is the day that we play Big Dummy, the game show that rewards you for your stunning ignorance. And here's how it works. You call us. We will spin the category wheel. Oh, look at he runs the board, yeah. and now he's just... You On need, it, man. You need to be distracted, apparently, to nail the timing. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. We will spin the category wheel, and then we'll ask you a question from that category. But here is where Big Dummy separates itself from your average, more reputable game show. We will continue to ask you questions until you get one right. Because, as always, we want you to leave here smarter than you showed up. So far this year, our biggest dummy is the lovely and talented Dunneen, who thought that plumber's crack was an illegal drug and found a way to answer 12 consecutive questions wrong. Can you do better? Well, of course you can. Everyone else has. So give us a call, and off we go on Big Dummy. To make a contestant to play Big Dummy, call 206-803-ROCK. 
You can like the men's room on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live, and send those emails to the men's room at KISW.com. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale with Hot Buys, your choice of color starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep Mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases and shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval. No minimum purchase required. Minimum monthly payment, down payment, tax, and delivery may be required. See store for details. Introducing the Two-Way V4, where groundbreaking fuel cell technology meets fresh foam cushioning for the ultimate performance. With fuel cell, each step feels explosive, delivering unparalleled energy return. Paired with fresh foam, experience maximum comfort throughout the game. Its lightweight textile upper offers support and breathability without sacrificing agility. Whether you're hitting the clutch shot or locking down the opposition, the Two-Way V4 gives you the tools to play at a high level. Learn more and purchase the Two-Way for yourself at NewBalance.com. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger, For the ones who get it done. Rolls on. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Oh, but y'all, so away we go. Welcome to season 19, episode number 4060. What a large and charge program we have for you today. Guaranteed future repeat. As the head chef is back, Ted's meat and potatoes heading south today for a little southern cooking, a little southern food. Now, whatever that means to you as far as the style of food, you could say that New Orleans cooking is technically considered southern food, but I consider that pretty much just New Orleans style cooking. Creole. Ted and I already went through this just quick. We said, like southern food, right? There's Texas. Both of us have agreed. You don't picture that as southern food. That's just meat and barbecue. Mm-hmm. Florida, that's the south as you can get. Well, also, that's Not, you know, very heavily influenced by the Gulf of Mexico as far as sure. shrimp and you know oysters and uh, grouper sandwiches and all those things, which is different. But Texas than, doesn't seem to do that in no, spite of being they, on the Gulf of Mexico. They are not I mean, known they, for their fish dishes. No. Right. I mean, unless you're down at, like, what's... What's what's a Galveston? Galveston, right? Sure, yeah. You're but, directly on. The but water. I'm with you. When I think Southern food, I'm thinking Virginia, the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama. Alabama. You like peach cobbler or uh, you right know, fried and that, chicken and, and those kind of things. That's what a lot of this is, and it's the most iconic, most okay. Southern iconic. dishes. Okay, All right. okay. Southern cooking coming up with the head chef and Ted's meat and potatoes. What else do we have for you? Oh, don't forget tomorrow on the program around four thirty, a major announcement that we cannot wait to bring you. Uh, uh, some of you maybe have uh, uh, learned about the surprise party by various reasons, but mm-hmm. anyway, we're going to make that announcement for you tomorrow, four thirty, and we are fired up. So, uh, the, I mean, we we it can't get here fast enough in our minds as far as what is going down. So uh, tomorrow, four thirty, uh, please if you get a chance, tune into the show. If not, check it out on the Odyssey app, and uh, and you'll get the announcement that we'll make tomorrow at four thirty. Speaking of the Odyssey app, download it now; it's absolutely free. We ask you to uh, subscribe to the Men's Room Daily Podcast there. Anyway, you can check the show out anytime you want. Like I said, if you miss the announcement tomorrow, you'll be able to uh, listen to it back uh, whenever you get a chance. Catch up on previous episodes and everything else. All our podcasts are there, Men's Room Radio Channel, and a whole lot more exclusively on Odyssey and the Odyssey app. And today is the day we play the game known as Big Dummy. It's an easy game to play. We spin the category wheel. You're either playing for Team Sober or Team Not Sober. So far, our biggest dummy, that would be Dunning, who took 12 questions to get one right before we cut her off. But uh, either way, uh, team sober, team so- uh, not sober. And as you know, when we play Big Dummy, we like to do a little men's room poll. Now, uh, the last time that we did the men's room poll, we learned the story of how the Guinness Book of World Records came in and basically took back the title of the world's oldest dog. Now, the dog has since passed on, mm-hmm. but uh, according to the owner, uh, there was a time stamp of around 30-some years. It could not be documented. There was no way to uh, microchip the animal at that right, right, time. Right. All the things that they uh, used to be able to determine the actual age of the dog, they could not do that. So they stripped this dog of its title. So the title ended up going back, uh, I believe, to a dog named Bluey. Another dead dog. Yeah. From like 1957 or whatever. 
But either way, uh, so uh, hypothetically, so like, look, if you are going to be in the Guinness Book of World Records uh, for one thing, I'll pick one of these four. So here were your choices. You could be in the Guinness Book of World Records for the world's biggest nose. Now, the biggest nose, that happened to be a Romanian gentleman who had about a four-inch nose. It was it, huge. It was incredible. He said he was it made fun of uh, most of his uh, childhood based on the size of his nose. But as he grew older, he kind of learned to grow into his nose, so to speak. Sure. I still think everybody's different. Big nose is just, I don't know. For whatever reason, I've just never really been like, oh, man. Big like, nose. I, I remember like in high school, there was a girl we was hanging out with. I thought she was smoking hot. When we were talking one day, and she's like, yeah, I got to get a nose job. And then, like, once she brought it up, it's like, now you can't not see it. Yeah. But I don't know. But right. people that have big noses, like, Miles, I've worked with you for years. You always bring it up. And I'm like, I never really noticed it was that big. It is big. But I mean, now that you bring it up, right. it's big. Well, I know, because I was made fun of as, for most of my life for having a huge nose. You know? Yeah. Like, that, that was just that was just one of the things, man. Easy target. Okay, here you go, your nose. Biggest lips. Woman down in Oregon. She had the biggest mouth and the biggest lips. Oh, her face, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, that is correct. And your final choice for a Guinness World Record, uh, but between nose, lips, and biggest ears, the longest hair. And that belonged to a woman in India named Smita. Her hair was seven feet, nine inches long. Something like that, yeah. Somewhere in there. Either way, uh, the process, she only washed her hair uh, two to three times a week. The entire process of going through all that took four hours. Yeah. It took 45 minutes to wash, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. She had to comb it out and uh, dry it out. It, it just seemed like a real pain in the ass. So we asked you, what do you want to have a Guinness World Record for? And here's how it shook down. We put the poll up on Twitter. If you follow us at Men's Room Live, here's how the voting went. Coming in at 9%, uh, the last thing that you would want a Guinness World Record for, that would be the biggest lips. <laughs> biggest lips. I said, no, I'm going to pass on that. Hey, my album. At 15%, uh, you said, hey. I'll take the world's biggest nose. And to be honest with you, the guy didn't look too bad. He, it was definitely a big nose. Definitely a big nose, but no, not, yeah, not a bad-looking dude. Kind of fit his face. Huge schnoz. Yes. Coming in at second place, at 18% of the vote, the biggest ears. Overwhelmingly, people said, I'll deal with the longest hair. At seven feet, yeah. nine inches long. 57% of you Damn. Right. said that you were going to do that. Okay. So, as you know, uh, hopefully, uh, 4.30 tomorrow. Our announcement we're going to make, and uh, we're going to have some friends in studio to help us make that announcement. I believe there's even going to be maybe like a little party going on here at work. I have no idea. I don't know what Didn't read the email. We're, we're going to be on the air. So either way, we have an announcement to make at 4.30. But we're asking you this time around that you are going to make an announcement to family, to friends, to all the people that you know. Post it on Facebook, whatever your social is. Let them know that you are ready to make this announcement, as we will do the same tomorrow. So... The first thing that you can make an announcement is, I lost my job. Not the worst thing in the world. Uh, everyone, Not the best thing in the world. Everyone I know has uh, gone through that in their mm -hmm. lifetime. Uh, either way, uh, it's not a fun scenario. But it's nothing to be proud of either, but sometimes, it, or most of the time, it ends up being for the better. But at the time, as you, it puts you in a lot of stress. It's a difficult time as far as can I pay bills, uh, do I have enough savings, all the things, what do I do next, am I going to have to move, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, first announcement, I lost my job. The second announcement that you have to tell your friends and family, I got an STD. From it's a dynamite. From a prostitute. Yes. Now, whether that be a lady of the night or a gigolo, you, you got an STD. Just now, a gigolo. It wasn't even a Why don't I tell my friends and family I got an STD? Well, yeah. normally you wouldn't tell. <laughs> you you, you got to make this When he just make said it, I'm like, I got an STD before. I don't think I called my mom. No. <laughs> group chat. But you'll have to now. Or just post it on Facebook. However you get the word out to family and friends. Congratulations, Ted. Nice work. Way to go. <laughs> you got an STD. Uh, number three on the list. You have to tell your family and friends that you have an active warrant out for your arrest. Yeah, just small oversight, but you should know this. Yeah, look, I'm at your house right now. Do you mind if I spend the night? I do have a warrant uh, out for my <laughs> arrest, in, in case you're wondering if anything weird happens. So, uh, Not telling you why. If they run the plate in your driveway there in my car, uh, chances are some crap could go down. I had a bench warrant once. Did it? Yeah. For what? I got a ticket on a boat in Deep Creek Lake for not having a boating license. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then my mom just never sent the check in, and yeah. Turns out if you don't pay and don't show up for court, then they send out a bench warrant. So yes. like, on two or three separate occasions, applying for something, I don't remember what it was, but they asked, are there any warrants for you? And I'm like, honest to God, I don't know. I don't think there should be, but 
I don't know. And then they do a check. And they're like, you don't. Like, cool. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Right. Like, I don't know if there's a warrant out for me. I can't think of what it would be for, but I cannot guarantee that there's well, not. Yeah, and the only way I found out was I had a buddy that was a cop and we were kidding around. He's like, dude, I think that's how it, he's like, you actually have a bench warrant. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. So you have a warrant. Surprise. Yeah. Out for your, hey, you know, whatever the deal is, whatever you've done, just know that there is a warrant out mm -hmm. for your arrest and you have to tell all your friends and family. And the fourth thing, you have to tell everyone you know. That you are dating your step-sibling. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You are, uh, look, you're not blood-related. It's nothing like that. You are no. dating your step-sibling. Now, if you want to uh, think that that is a ridiculous scenario, there is a website. Uh, if you have not heard about this, I would not recommend checking it out at work. But there is a website called Pornhub, all right? I don't know if you've heard of it or not. What? Yes, it's called Tell Pornhub. Tell me more. All right. In a look... At 218,000 Pornhub titles from 2008 to 2018, data driven, uh, the data driven site components found a incredible spike in quote, step porn. They explained it in their piece that they wrote, and it's an extensive uh, piece. Uh, every story is an Epstein story, a conversation with Stoya. It's not just Pornhub either. This is a trend across all porn sites. According to Alex Hawkins, who is the vice president at another one, uh, they've seen a spike in step content in the past decade as well. There are currently more than 10,000 videos with step in the title on his site, nearly 40 times more than what was there a decade ago. Damn. Pretty much everyone from big studios to premium social to amateurs is making at least some kind of step content, although he admits rarely are any of the actors involved well, of in course. any of these scenes. Actual step siblings, obviously, they're role-playing in every single scenario well, they do, the, regardless the other, of the genre. I bring this up every time. The other problem is, like, you can't, there's some actresses you want to watch, but it's all step stuff. It's like, I don't exactly. care about that. Or step step how you God live, forbid how you want to see a 43-year-old dude with a 22-year-old chick. It's all <laughs> right. step stuff. Well, it's also the dialogue involved. <laughs> if you happen to have the volume up. You know, like... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm always like, God, can't we just see this? With a, can can right. they just... Can it just Watch be, it on mute. Yeah, what about yeah. middle-aged guy hooks up with college girl? <laughs> right. Anyway. Well, you, you, it would so you know what I'm looking for. It would happen if it was trending. <laughs> I, well, I know, but I'm saying, like, yeah. you, I got to go through so many pages. Finally, it's like, I know it's not his stepdaughter. I'm watching it. Right. right. So they, they're trying to figure out. <laughs> no, that one yeah. actually is stepdaughter. Yeah. Psychologist, everyone's trying to figure out this, this, this weird trend, right? They say, as with human sexuality itself, the reasons behind this trend are uh, complex. So complex that a doctor in Boston who was the president of Culture Reframed. They are a nonprofit aimed to address uh, hypersexualized media. He calls this the perfect storm, and he does have a theory along with a bunch of other doctors. You're not related to someone who you find hot. Yes. I think that's the explanation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. According to a survey <laughs> in a paper <laughs> from a research institution, Americans between the ages of 18 and 87, when asked about their sexual fantasies, he put out a book, Tell Me What You Want. One in five people reporting to having at least one incest fantasy before, according to research. Now, a much smaller number, just 3%, said they had frequent incest fantasies. Now, those fantasies take on a slew of forms, from blood relatives to twins to cruel intentions-esque uh, Wait, like fantasies. your own twin? I want to have sex with this person who looks just like me? But one of the major working theories wow. of the time frame and when this started. The suspicion is that part of it has to do with a very popular media portrayal of incest. Then they get into the... What was the popular media portrayal? I'm, I'm going through my mind trying to think of what it was. HBO's long-running series, Game of Thrones. Oh, God. Which was about the same point where this started really? to trend up. But it's weird because one... It's one of the many the aspects. Actors. but actors... And yeah, yeah his, the so woman who played his sister was hot, but I never thought, boy, I wish she was my sister. More like, I would like to have sex with that woman, but she does not need to be related to me. And I don't know, like, yeah. It was one of, it was one of seven sister, different theories. I just thought that was the most interesting. Basically, yeah. another one was, look, most people watch porn apparently on their mobile device. So, uh, 
you have more privacy, so if those are your fantasies, it's easier to watch. There's all but that was the one that stuck out to me where I was like, oh wow, there's a they have a definitive timeline. I think they're um, overthinking they it though. I mean, honest to God, I think like you are attracted to this person, you want to have sex with this person, you're not related to this person. Beginning and end of the whole thing, whatever the relationship, you can call it whatever you want, but like I'm not related to you. I find you attractive. I want to have sex with you. But so far in my life, every person I've had sex with, that's the exact scenario. We're yeah. not related. I find you attractive. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that have kids so early. Like I don't know. I just imagine if you have. Two, you know, Miles, you went there. If you had two teenage daughters and you married a woman that had like a teenage son, like naturally you'd probably be like, oh, we got to worry. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Just because like they're just in I, that actually, age bracket. You know, the weird thing about it is, I think if your blood, what, what I found is, and with my children, uh, when my uh, wife got uh, remarried, uh, her her husband had two siblings pretty close to the same age as, as my daughters. All right. Oh, all right. The, the, the blood relatives on each side. They kind of tend to stick it to each other more as far as arguments, nitpicking, sure, everything else. All right. But the siblings who are not related kind of had more of just a friendship relationship where they loved each other and cared about each other and everything else, but they got along better. Yeah. All right. You know, it, when they cross-pollinated, like, as far as, like, let's do stuff as friends, let's go out, let's have a good time. Yeah, you can have a good time. All man. those things where sometimes, you know, with your own, you kind of, I don't know, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a different relationship, even though you're close and you're tight. It's sure. Just, it's more of this is my sister, this is my brother, instead of well, you know what I mean. Hey, that's my that's my stepbrother. We 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 go out and party all the time, or whatever the deal is. Hey, yeah, I don't I don't think it's particularly complex. I just think it's weird the guy like oh, I'm gonna do this stuff. You're like yeah. they're not related and they want to have sex, dude. That's, that's what it. it is. So our men's room poll. Uh, I'll take any three that's not <laughs> step single <yeah>. sibling. <laughs> You're gonna make an announcement like we will tomorrow at four thirty. Is it A? I lost my job. B. Got an STD from a hooker. Uh, C, I have a warrant. Or D, I am dating my step-sibling. There is your men's room poll. We'll take a break and come back with Big Dummy right after the... With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. One, two, three, four. Those are numbers. But you already knew that. If you want to know what number you're going to pay each month for your car, use Kelly Blue Book My Wallet on AutoTrader. They're really good at numbers. <laughs> Auto Trader. Love the flexibility of working in all sorts of places? Well, working on the go seamlessly requires a strong network like T Mobile. We have America's largest 5G network, so whether you're on a video call at the park or uploading large files at a coffee shop, we have the 5G speed you need. Whatever takes you on the go, T Mobile's got you covered. Find out more at tmobile.com slash network today. Coverage not available in some areas. See 5G device coverage and access details at tmobile.com. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Name is Big Dummy. 206 803 Rock. Steve was our first contestant. Ready to play the big game. Hello, Zach. Welcome to the men's room. Big Dummy. Hola, bitch. Hola. 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 Zach, are you sober or not sober? Uh, not sober. All right, Zach, welcome to Big Dummy. Okay, our men's room poll. You're going to make an announcement like we will tomorrow at 4.30. Will it be I lost my job? I get an STD from a prostitute. I have a warrant or I'm dating my step-sibling. Uh, I'll take the STD from a prostitute. You got it, buddy. <laughs> All right. Interesting choice. All right, Zach. Well, uh, that... Uh, Here's your question. Who was the first host of America's Got Talent? Oh, um, say Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. Nick now, Cannon? Nope. Do we know this person? You absolutely know this person. For the most part, you only knew him as a TV host and then a talk show. He's now dead. Come on, man. He was our go-to. If Ryan Seacrest wasn't going to take the job, then it went to Regis Philbin. Oh. Huh. I did not know that. Oh, no that. 
kidding. Yeah, man. I mean, the show's been on, what, like 20 years now or something like that? Yeah, he was actually the first host. All oh, right. Oh, wow. Okay. In the world of TV, the TV show NCIS is a spinoff from what other show? Uh, MASH. CSI? Uh, nope. Or NCI, oh, uh, JAG. JAG. I, was like, I bet JAG. you your mom watched it. That's a big one in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My mom literally watched that movie. Everyone's mother <laughs> watched that, that show. show. Who was the guy, who was uh, the main actor on that? I can't remember. Uh, uh, it, it was the guy with the silver hair. Mark, uh, not Mark Harmon, because he's NCI. It was NCIS, but I can't remember. But my mom would watch that show just because that guy was on it. I thought it was Mark Harmon, too. Hmm. All right, your question. Multiple choice. Malta, Sicily, Capri, or Santorini. Which Mediterranean island once campaigned to become a U.S. state? Malta, Sicily, Capri, or Santorini. What was your guess? Santorini. I'll say Malta. Sicily. Really? Yep. Between 1945 and 1946, post-World War II, Hmm. they lobbied to become a U.S. state. Hmm. That's what I said when I read it. Huh. No idea. That'd be wild if that was a U.S. state. Man, you'd go there a lot. A lot of people would live there. Yes, they would, man. All right. What fruit comes in varieties of freestone and clingstone? What fruit? What fruit? Clingstone? Uh... Uh, fruit? What was your guess? Fruit? It's a fruit, yes. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, oranges. Cherries? Nope. The fruit that almost everyone likes, but nobody buys peaches. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, like every time I have a peach, I'm like, man, this is really good. And I'll never buy one. All right, you got you got something that I'm going to think about now. What peaches? But, 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 pe- yeah, basically. Zach, I think you really need to get a hobby, man. Don't just sit sure. around thinking. No, about no, peaches. I want you to think about peaches. I want you to, and write down your thoughts. Yeah. All right, your question. Yeah, no, no, this is exactly what my therapist told me. <laughs> I believe that. Keep paying him. <laughs> what baseball team suffered from the curse of the Bambino? Oh, the Bears. No, baseball team. Baseball, baseball team. The Cubs! The Cubs! The Cubs! No, yeah. no, they just, no. They just didn't win for a long time. They just sucked. There Boston was no Red curse. Sox. Yeah, the Boston Red Sox. Oh. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out, yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life, don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and not a yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale. With Hot Buys, your choice of color starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases. And shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval. No minimum purchase required. Minimum monthly payment, down payment, tax, and delivery may be required. See store for details. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger. Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Are you ready to check one off the bucket list? Experience Slotzilla, the world's ultimate zip line, located at Fremont Street Experience in downtown Las Vegas. Launch from Slotzilla, the largest slot machine in the world at 35 miles per hour. Zoom under Viva Vision, the largest digital display in the world. All while basking in the glow of the neon marquees of the iconic casinos. Purchase tickets at VegasExperience.com. Slotzilla, a ride unlike any other. 
Meet the New Balance Fuel Cell 4040 V7, the choice of elite ball players like Michael Harris, engineered for responsiveness and agility. This versatile option is built for speed demons who demand peak performance. With fuel cell foam underfoot and a synthetic mesh upper, experience unparalleled breathability, comfort, and a secure fit as you round the bases. The nitrogen infused fuel cell midsole propels you forward with every step, ensuring you stay ahead of the game. Learn more and purchase the 4040 at newbalance.com. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger, offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out, yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and not a yada yada. Only at Metro by T Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. Oh, uh, they had the Billy Goat curse. What was the thing behind that? I, I vaguely remember hearing that. Oh, is BD BD back there? Just, come, we'll just walk over. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at him. He's from Chicago, a massive Cubs He's fan. He's a huge Cubs fan. That's why I know it's the Billy Goat curse. There's a Billy Goat cafe, but I don't know why. One, it's the Billy Goat tavern. Oh, yeah. okay. Not the cafe. Yeah, Ted. Two, <laughs> the owner of the Billy Goat wanted to bring the, his goat, who is the mascot of the Billy Goat Tavern, to Wrigley Field, and they denied him entrance. Said you could not bring the goat. Oh. So he placed a curse on the Cubs. What a douchebag. Yes, you couldn't I bring agree. a goat? Yes. Christ yeah, and, 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 but I mean, that tavern is world famous. You figure that goat could get into the... to, to uh, You would think so, but apparently Wrigley. farm animals are not allowed. <laughs> and didn't you have an occurrence, uh, an altercation with Terrence, one of her goats? Wouldn't you rather eat oh, a goat? Oh, yeah, well, that goat's gone. Right. Yeah. That's my point. So this is why we hate goats. Pet solutions. Yeah. All right, uh, Zach, you're on question number six. Question number six for you, Zach. What chess piece moves in an L shape? A fish up. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, all right. Yeah, yeah, it's the night. Okay. There, there you nice go. go. There you go. go. Nice job, Zach. Nice job. Hey, that's a nice job. 206803 right now. Nope. I think he did the best he could. I would agree with that. Hello, Matt. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, de todos. Oh, yeah. Matt, are you on Team Sober or Team Not Sober? Uh, Team Sober. Matt, welcome to Big Dummy. Okay, our men's room poll. You are going to make an announcement. Is it I lost my job? I got an STD from a prostitute. I have a warrant or I'm dating my step-sibling. I'm just going to go with the uh, have, a, have a warrant thing. It seems like the most uh, normal. <laughs> okay, perfectly normal. Yeah. Perfectly normal. All right, Matt, here is your question. What actor received Emmy nominations for playing the same character on three different shows. Crap. Um, uh, I, uh, Pat Sajak, I don't know. Pat Sajak. What do you guess? Oh, Actor played the same Kelsey, character. Kelsey, Kelsey Grammer. The same character. But Kelsey, Kelsey Grammer. All right. It was we'll Kelsey Grammer. Right? Newhart. So he was right. Emmy nominated for Frasier. He was Emmy nominated for Cheers. And believe it or not, the character Frasier also showed up on the TV show Wings. Oh, that's my issue. I I was I didn't know he showed up on Wings. I didn't either. That's why I cross checked it, and I'm like, I'll be damned. So yeah, but he got an Emmy nominated. It was also uh, Emmy nominated for his role as a uh, sidestep Bob in The Simpsons. Believe it or not. Sideshow. Side Sideshow. Side what did I just say? Sidestep. Sidestep, Jesus. Yeah. Sideshow Bob, my bad. All right, your question. How many sizes too small was the Grinch's heart? Uh, three sizes too small? There's only two sizes too small. Don't try to ill will right. man. My God. That explains his complexion. 
All right, Matt, your question on what continent is the Balkan Peninsula? Like Balkan with a B, like as in boy? As in boy, yes. Okay. Uh, Asia? Europe. 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 Yeah. I would get your help. I just think of Russia right now. I know Russia's been mainly in Asia. It's in Asia, so. Right. All right, your question. What three vows do Catholic priests take? Um, I don't know, the celibate vow. Celibacy. Um, what is it? Um, wow. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an atheist. Uh, that's kind of a tough one. Celibacy, you said Catholic priests. It's Catholic priest. Celibacy is not one of them, but it's poverty. I guess, well, chastity. So, oh, chastity, right. So poverty, chastity, and obedience, just like Joel Olstein. Okay. All right. Your question. Uh, yeah, because, like, they don't have other jobs, but there was always car dealerships that gave the priest cars. Oh, of course. And then yeah. you live for free in, like, the seminary or that whatever. Was called the, the house attached to the church kind of thing. I guess seminary is where you learn. Uh, yeah, there was always, like, I went to Catholic school. There was always, like, a little house attached. Yeah, always. All the time. All right, question. How many planets in our solar system have rings around them? Uh, um, one, two, uh, two, three, four, four. Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and of course, Matt, Uranus. There are rings around Uranus. Question number six. Question number six, what kind of flower does saffron come from? It's also the name of a bad 80s band. <laughs> um, um, uh, sunflower, I don't know, man. So it's got to be something that's Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern. It's a bad 80s band. On occasion, you and I will bring them up, and there's one song we ever play from them. Only if you and I are talking about it. They are not part of our regular playlist. They're screaming in the night, Miles. Screaming in the night. Oh, God. Come on, man. Crocus. Oh, that's a flower? Yeah. I did not know that. Oh, really? No. Yeah, crocus no is idea. a flower. Did not know they that. They spell right. it wrong, but yeah, crocus is in fact a flower. Because nothing says metal like naming your band after a flower. Hmm. I've always said that. Yeah. All right, the question. Dr. Jack Kevorkian earned what nickname after medically assisting the suicides of 130 terminally ill people? Um, um, Doctor, like, death or something like that? There you go. In fact, Dr. Death. Yeah, that was Kevorkian. So 130 terminally ill patients. Right? And it's not like he just killed them. They said, like, yeah, man, I, I want to be taken off the machine. They threw his ass in jail. Your dog breaks a leg, you, like, put him down. That's right. $2,000? Nah. Nah. That's the deal, man. Is that, hey, that, is that still legal in Washington, Oregon? Hmm? I don't Assistant? know. I think yeah. it is. It's it state is. by state for sure. And they went after his ass. 130 people. Yeah. There's, st- there's a lot of theories that Robin Williams was super sick. Well, he was. Yeah, that, that but hadn't sure. told anybody. And that's why a lot of people think he committed suicide. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I don't know if that makes it better or worse. I learned of that today, believe it or not. What's that? Just the fact that you can cut it off. Oh, and Washington State. Mm-hmm. I think it should be an odd, you know, look, you're not encouraging anyone to do that, but there are circumstances where you understand that's a decision you might want to make. And my argument's always been, I had to put my dog down. But I suspect that if my dog understood the words coming out of my mouth and what the veterinarian was saying, my dog may have had a different approach. Like, we're going to put the dog in. I think my dog may have been, hey, let's give it a little longer. Right, but, but I mean, assistant, like, you're making the choice. That's I, what I, I mean with people. Yeah, oh, yeah. You're I making the choice. In my yeah. dog, I'm like, I'm making this choice for him. I get the feeling my dog would be like, I don't like your, yes, yes. my back is kind of messed up, but, dude, I'm not trying to go just yet. I'll yeah, I mean, if the doctor goes, look, you have something terminal, you don't know it yet, but, like, basically, the next four, six months are going to be, you're going to feel awful. awful. Like, terrible. Then you're going to die. Right. Right. It's like, I I don't know what's better or worse. Yeah, speed it up, man. Hello, Dion. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, amigos. Hola. Hola. Dion, are you sober or not sober? Should I even ask? (laughs) Not sober. Wow. That's a surprise. You owe me a dollar. 
I know. Make an announcement, Dion. Is it I lost my job? I got an STD from a hooker. I have a warrant or I'm dating a step sibling. I'm going to go with a warrant since it kind of brings back memories. I bet it does. Uh, what was your warrant for? Oh, I think failure to appear. <laughs> I forgot about it. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. that's one of the more ironic yeah, it, ones. It is. It is. Failure to appear. Like, dude, honestly, I forgot. It was a marijuana <laughs> conviction. Right. <laughs> All right, Dion. Yeah, that that go- definitely uh, contributes. Again, Miles, you owe me another dollar. Mm-hmm. All right, here is your question. What company provides us with Swiss Army knives? Oh, God, Swiss mm-hmm. Army knives. Um, I'm going to go with Buck. Is it Swiss? No. Swiss Army? <laughs> no. That's what cracks me up. I mean, I didn't know either, but okay. I'm just like... Nobody knows who the hell makes these, but it is uh, Victorinox. Oh, Victorinox. Victorinox, yeah. How do you spell that? How do you spell that? V-I-C-T-O-R-I-N-O-X. Victorinox. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wow. Are you okay, Dion? Oh, yeah, I'm good, man. Okay, all right. I'm just checking. All right, your question. Who is the author of the epic poem Paradise Lost? Paradise Lost. Mm-hmm. Hemingway? Nope. John Milton. John mm. Milton. That's how they named Milton Washington. After John Milton, yes. Yep. That was yep. Paradise Found. Just go there if you don't believe it. To me. Milton. All right, your question. What actor starred in both of the only two Christmas movies that were released in 1989? He was also... A main cast member on Big Bang Theory, and he had a recurring role on Roseanne. Oh, I know that guy. That's the guy uh, I'm thinking. Oh, shoot. Uh, Michael O'Keefe? Johnny Galecki. Johnny Galecki. Yeah. So there are only two Christmas oh. movies released in 89. It's a Christmas Vacation. And then something about a reindeer. I can't remember the name. It did not do well, but yeah. Right. Two, and he was in both of them. Go figure. Those might be the best two kids. Oh, as far as the Christmas family? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. What's it, Audrey and Russ? It's always Audrey and Russ. Yeah, yeah. 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 it just depends who (laughs) fills in the shoes. All right, your question. What is the fastest sense? The fastest sense. Scent? Sense. Sense, as in your five senses. Smell? He said scent. I'll say sight. Hearing. 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 That is your fastest. Hmm. On that note, what is the slowest sense? What is it? Say again. What is the slowest of the senses? Slowest of the senses. uh, Oh, God. Reaction. Reaction. Senses. Sight? Smell. Smell. Oh. Now, here is the fastest smell. It's the slowest. All right, question six, Dion. Question number six for Dion. What is the British equivalent to 911? 711? That would be 711. It's three. Nine, <laughs> nine, nine, nine. Nine, nine, oh, nine. it is 999. Nine, yeah, it's 999. Nine. Oh. That's an emergency number. Wow. In Germany, it's known as no, no, no. Yeah. I like their cop. Among other things. Among other things. Yes. You can see them. You're like, what? The cop cars in Europe, they're like bright and have bright colors on them. They are super bright. Yeah, yeah so you can sure. see them if you need help. All right, your question. What blood type is the universal receiver? Not donor, but the universal receiver. The universal receiver receives a blood type. Mm-hmm. O negative. A, B, positive. Wow. Question eight. When somebody here says the slowest sense, common. All right, your question. Arthas, Porthos, and Aramis are better known by what collective name? Oh. These three Okay, dudes. one more time on that, please. Arthas, oh, yeah. these are three people. So Arthas, Porthos, and Aramis are better known by what collective name? 
Chocolate? It's also a candy bar. Yeah. Uh, it's also a candy bar. There's three of them. Um, it's a candy bar with three, Dion. Can you think of any candy bars that have three in the name? Three Musketeers? Oh, Boom. my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You got it. There was a fourth. Was Musketeer. Didn't they make a movie and call it the fourth Musketeer or something like that? Yeah. No, no. He's yeah. not a candy bar. <laughs> More big. Look around. You can find cars like these on Auto Trader. New cars, used cars, electric cars, maybe even flying cars. Okay, no flying cars, but as soon as they get invented, they'll be on Auto Trader. Just you wait. Auto Trader. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale with Hot Buys, your choice of color starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases and shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval, no minimum purchase required. Minimum monthly payment, down payment, tax, and delivery may be required. See store for details. In the fast-paced world of attacking, speed is everything. And that's where the Furon 7 Plus shines. Engineered for accuracy and precision at a rapid pace, it's your secret weapon on the pitch. Experience overall comfort and precise striking, even in the game's fastest moments. The nylon outsole with its V-shaped stud configuration is designed for firm ground, giving you the grip you need to outmaneuver your opponents. Step up your attacking game and learn more and purchase the Furon at NewBalance.com. Are you experienced? Sure, you've been to Las Vegas, but have you truly experienced Las Vegas? The Fremont Street Experience is the OG Las Vegas, featuring 100 amazing bars and restaurants, incredible people watching, and the signature Downtown Rocks concert series, featuring free live music from top acts. And you have to check out Slotzilla, the world's ultimate zip line. Do Vegas right. Check out the Fremont Street Experience and purchase your tickets to Slotzilla, a zip line unlike any other, at VegasExperience.com. Coming up, 206 803 Rock. 99.9 KISW. The men's room returns with Miles and Thrill. Game is Big Dummy, 206 803 Rock. Steve, who is our next contestant, ready to play the big game? We'll get there. Quick question. Do you guys think today's questions are particularly tough? Got a couple of texts today. People say, man. They are not my categories of knowledge. They're not your categories of knowledge. That is correct. All right. I would so guys, no, wait, no saying you're stupid. Croken, uh, or cro- whatever. Crocus? Crocus is a flower. Really? I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. I didn't either. Yeah. And a band. But the flower is better than the band. Big dummy! Hello, Roscoe. Welcome to the men's room. Hello. Hola. Hola. Roscoe, are you sober or not sober? I, I'm sober, but these questions have me questioning that. Okay. All right. I didn't realize they were that tough today. Are you... There's some tough ones. Roscoe, are you skydiving? Am I? Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, was I yelling? No. Sounds like you're in a wind tunnel. <laughs> I left the gym to think about it, though. Are you skydiving? Uh, Jesus, let me find no. the noisiest place I can to call. All right, Roscoe. Hey, let me turn my Bluetooth off. Then that'll be better. Well. Okay. Yeah. Well, you get a, don't get a ticket. Is that better? Yes, that's much better. Thank All you, right. Roscoe. Sorry. All right, you're going to make an announcement. It's going to be I lost my job, I got an STD from a hooker, I have a warrant, or I'm dating a step-sibling. Oh, well, I'm going to have to go with I lost my job. Lost your job. Yeah. What do you do for a living? I'm a truck driver. So, if you pee dirty, you lose your job. Correct, yeah. Okay. All right, how often do they, uh, world we live in. How often do they test you guys? Uh, I've only had one random when I've been driving for three years. Are you short hop or long? Uh, local. I'm uh, running Tacoma to Woodenville right now. I think I'd rather do long haul, yeah. man. 405 yep. can be a little weird. Oh, weird. It sucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but at least local, you'd go home. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Maybe that's why I want a long haul, Ted. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's your question. Who was the first European to sail into New York Harbor? They even named a bay and a river after him. Uh, I don't know. Napoleon. <laughs> Hudson. Hudson. There you go. Henry Hudson. Uh. All right, new question. What is the name of the event where tributes are chosen for the movie The Hunger Games? Oh, 
the the rapture. <laughs> I know it. You're close. You're close. Not the rapture. It's the reaping. reaping. The reaping. reaping. Yeah. All right. Question: On what soap opera did John Stamos play the character Blackie Parrish? Blackie. Oh, that's before my. I only know him from Full House. He was on a soap opera. Uh, One of the few soap operas where I know dudes would watch it on occasion. Yeah. Pick the most popular one. Uh, Days of Our Lives. General Hospital. General Hospital. Oh. Question four. Question number four. Who played Opie on the Andy Griffith show? Andy? Opie. Oh. Opie. Played Opie on the Andy Griffith show. Opie Cunningham. Played, yeah. Played Richard Cunningham on Happy Days. Now he directs movies. Little Opie Cunningham. Kind of a big director. Yeah. His daughter's well, a big time. Yeah. Again. Her brother, uh, his brother's a supermodel. <laughs> yeah. He does all the before uh, pictures. John Stamos. Ron, Ron Howard. Howard. Yes, indeed. You never watch the Andy Griffith show? Nope. Maybe my dad. Okay. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 25. All right, yeah, that I, adds up. When I hear Roscoe, I think you're 55, 60 years old, just mm-hmm. to be honest with you. Yeah, so is everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> now, not the Andy Griffith show is old, but there were still reruns on when I was a kid. Yeah. Who did your parents name you after, or did they just like the name Roscoe? Dukes of Hazzard. Uh, everyone thinks it's the Dukes of Hazzard, but it was my uh, great-grandpa. I would never think it's Dukes of Hazzard, because I can't imagine anyone would want their child to what reflect what, what, Roscoe what, what, P. Coltrane. Roscoe's, is it fried chicken? Wa- chicken and waffles. waffles. Chicken, chicken and waffles. waffles. Yeah, okay. I, was trying, I was trying to think what the other uh, famous Roscoe is. All right, Roscoe, your question, multiple choice. How many states' capitals are oh. also the state's largest city? All right. State capital, also the oh. state's largest city. 15, 17, 29, or 32? I'm going to go low. I'm going to get 15. 19? 17. 17. 17. Right. So it's uh, Arizona, Arkansas, Colorado, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa, Massachusetts, Mississippi, Ohio, Oklahoma, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Utah, West Virginia, and Wyoming. Okay. The most populous city? The biggest yeah. city is also your state capital. Right? So like, but Columbia, to, South Carolina, I think Charleston's bigger than Columbia, isn't it? It's not. It's not? All right. Believe it or not, it's not. And I think some of that is just geographically the size. So you oh, quote, unquote, have more people. Like people and Boston's say, the capital of Massachusetts? Boston's the capital of Massachusetts. I did not know that yeah. for some reason. Because you think about it, we, you know, Olympia, definitely not the biggest. Sacramento, Annapolis. not the biggest. Annapolis, not the biggest. So, yeah, seven, only 17 out of 50 it's states. Not Springfield? Oh, that's What's Illinois. That? Yeah, Springfield's Illinois. Or, yeah, 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 it's yeah. Illinois. Or, yeah. Or Missouri? No. Apparently, Jim I just Jefferson don't know state City. capitals. That's what I realized when I went through this list. So I'm like, yeah. I'll be damned. I was kind of with you on Boston. I don't know why I did not think it was the state capital. Yeah. And I don't know what I thought was the state capital, but I didn't think it was Boston. All right, your question. What piece of pop culture introduced us to Mrs. Peacock and Colonel Mustard? Mm. I'm sorry, repeat the question. What piece of pop culture introduced us to Mrs. Peacock and Colonel Mustard? Oh, man. You guys picked the wrong caller today. I have no idea. Clue, clue, the board game Clue. Oh, and don't worry, the the, the nobody likes Clue. I love that as a kid. I don't even know the last time I played it. Yeah, I was like, do kids still play it? Ah, uh, if they do, my kids did not. So I don't know. All right, the question: What is the capital of South Dakota? South Dakota, uh, Carson City. So North Dakota's Bismarck, South Dakota, Pierre. Pierre, correct. Wow. All right. Spelled Pierre, but they say Pierre. Question seven, Roscoe. What seems to be the number of the day? Yeah, people keep telling me your questions are challenging. Well, well, good. I think that's a good thing. All right, your question. Two cans are native to what continent? South America? There you go. There you go. Nice job, right. Roscoe. Two can same. Okay. South American. Never knew that about it. They got the birds down there. About your Fruit Loops. Game is up. Big Tummy 206-803-ROCK. Big 
Hello, Morgan. Welcome to the Men's Room. Hola, bitch. Hola. Hola. Morgan, are you on Team Sober or Team Not Sober? Uh, not sober today. All right, Morgan, welcome to Big Dummy. Okay. Our Men's Room poll. You get to make an announcement like we do tomorrow at 4.30. Is it, I lost my job? I got an STD from a hooker? I have a warrant. <laughs> or I'm dating my stepsister or brother. Uh, I'll go with the job. Lost All, right. Job. Before. All right, Morgan, what's your what's your uh, what's your employment? Oh, uh, installing stuff. Installing stuff. All right, that is well spoken. Okay, you I mean, just like, put that on a resume and get yeah. hired anyway. Is that like a grow room? I mean, why so? Uh, maybe he just doesn't want to say his company's name. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I got you, bud. <laughs> uh, by the way, somebody here says we play Clue all the time. My kids love it. So yes, people are still playing Clue. Huh. Hey, do you guys like puzzles? I do. Okay. You mean yeah, like I'm building one now. Jigsaw style? Do you oh, I thought it? you were yeah. setting us up for a joke. That's what I thought. Do you realize no, that, uh, I no is it is it 2,000 pieces? Oh, man, no, just 1,000. Okay. Uh, just 1,000. I want to say 2,000 is the same press. What do you mean? So no matter oh, what so the image is, huge. as far as the press of the pieces, it's yeah. the same press. They never change the press. Ah, okay. So gotcha. every piece is shaped the same on every puzzle. In huh. every position. Really? Yeah. I'll be damned. You what is your puzzle out? of, by the way? I'm just curious. Oh, thrill. Yeah, let me see here. It's a Star Wars one, like most of them. Um, I don't think this is a specific movie. It's got, like, Empire Strikes Back and Last Jedi stuff on here, but it's called Impressive Most Impressive. Impressive Most Impressive. Mm, okay. okay. It's, got, it's got all the guys on there. All the guys. And the ships and uh, whatever. Does it have Jar Jar Binks? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, good. I was going to tell you to throw it away. All right, here is your question. Which Teletubby has a triangle on its head? Um, This reminds me of when Ted tried to say that Pinky Winky died, and he just stopped, started laughing. It's Pinky Winky. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Pinky Winky. Winky. I'm glad well, you brought that you... up because my clue was going to be Ted could not <laughs> eulogize Tinky Winky <laughs> properly. Morgan, Pinky. did you... Okay, <laughs> and one more thing. Uh, when... Crocus, one of the funniest repeats, you, or not repeat, just uh, the old uh, episode you did, um, Miles, he did a thing about Crocus and Larry the Dragon. That was hilarious. <laughs> Damn. Did you watch Teletubbies growing up there, Morgan? Hell no. <laughs> you just knew that. You just knew that. I think it's the only one anyone could name. If you ask me anything Teletubbies, I'm going to say Tinky Winky. I don't know any of their other names. <laughs> All right, but listen, you are the only one and done today, but before we let you go, we give you a 50-50 question. Like last week, we're doing the same thing. This week, I will tell you two actors. You tell me which one is taller. Keep in mind, they're all short. So today, we have Kim Jong versus Rob Schneider. Which one is taller, Kim Jong or Rob Schneider? Schneider. Kim Jong. Is it? Kim Jong is 5'5". Five, five. Rob Schneider is 5'3". Five three? five three. Yeah. Wow. Uh huh. Game is big dummy two oh six eight oh three rock. Hello, Ron. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitch. Hola. Hola. Ron, are you sober or not sober? I'm sober right now. All right, Ron, welcome to Big Dummy. Okay. Our men's room poll, you get to make an announcement. Is it I lost my job? I got an S T D from a hooker. I have a warrant, or I'm dating my step sibling. Uh, I'm going to go with I lost my job. Lost your job. What do you do for a living? I'm an elevator constructor. You construct them? Yes, sir. I build them. How dangerous is that based on the fact that you guys go up first and it's basically, is there like a net halfway through the uh, elevator shaft in case something happens? Uh, no, but you're, you're usually typically tied off to something. Does typically, it, I like that. Does typically, it, does it tell? Does it help you that you can't really see the bottom of the shaft? Uh, I, I don't know. I've I've never really thought about it too much. I now know. you're going to. Okay, Miles just ruined your job for you. <laughs> I just think that would freak me out. Yes, I think and, we're getting and that. operational. This poor dude's like oper- I never thought about this oper- man. Operational wise, if they are operational, you do have to take a tumble down a shaft, right? Sure. They say most of the time you don't even make it to the bottom. You do, but the the what do you cable- mean you don't make it to the bottom? Well, depending on the type of head's going to hit something. Uh, the cables in there, or if it's a band system, you have a better chance. Oh, right, right. But the cables will kind of do the same thing as a cable line to a motorcyclist on the interstate. 
I think I'd prefer that than waiting to smash into the bottom of a dark yeah, chamber. Basically, just it's all awful. Mm-hmm. You know, you're right. <laughs> at that point, it doesn't matter if a tiger attacks you on the way down. Like whatever. All right, here's your question: What is the name of Google's mobile operating system? Ooh, uh, Quest. Android. Android. It is Android. That's all. You think there's a woman out there named Android? No. I really hope there is. All right, the question: Bean Town is the nickname for what city? Hmm. We just brought it up. Mm-hmm. Let's go with Boston. You there got you it. go. Yes, that's good. Bean town. I know. Okay, I know. There's uh, Boston baked beans. Yeah, and they yeah. used to have a lot of places in Boston called beaneries. Well, what was a beanery? You go I, eat beans. It's a pub with beans. I, is that is that based on the fact of the uh, traditional English breakfast? Would you say, Ted? Or I mean, it's just an old town. I mean, when when Probably. the four big colleges in in Boston play hockey, they call it the Bean Pot. Right. I just wonder, like, because you think of the Boston Tea Party, you think of all these things. Right. 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 And when you think of baked beans, I, n- I normally think of barbecue or Texas or Southern style food. Sure. And I realize that you know beans are beans. It doesn't matter, but like they don't grow beans there. It's like it's not the bean. I guess they just eat it. The fact that you can use beanery and that's a sales pitch blows my mind. Like ooh, a beanery. One, one of the best restaurants in town where I grew up, as far as bar food and a good bar, was the Boston Beanery. The Boston Beanery. Guess what yeah. they did not sell? Are you serious? No, no beans. No beans. Come on. No, I'm dead serious. No beans. It's like a, just like it's like a, it's like a nickname for a pub. You know? Yeah, but you're right though. English people, you got beans on toast. You have the beans with the breakfast. Right. You can even put beans on a baked potato. Hmm, that sounds pretty good. I actually, I've never thought about that. Thinking about it now, yeah. I might have to do it. Hello, Tom. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, hola. hola. Tom, are you on team sober or team not sober? I'm sober. All right, Tom, welcome to the big dummy. Okay, our men's room poll, Tom. We got an announcement tomorrow at four thirty. It's a biggie. But you get to make an announcement on our poll. Is it, I lost my job. I got an STD from a hooker. I have a warrant. Or I'm dating my step-sibling. I have to be uh, lose my job. Who's your job? Tom, what do you do? I manage a safety program. Okay. What kind of safety? Uh, for air crews and maintenance folks mostly for the Air Force. Oh, oh damn. Very cool. All right. Okay. <laughs> you sound like an idiot. All right, Tom. Here's your question. How many dice are there in the game Boggle? You guys remember Boggle? Yeah. It's, um, in, it's inside that little bubble, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think there are nine. Four. Sixteen. Jesus. Sixteen. It's your average game where you need 16 dice to play. Okay. All right, time your question. What is a group of toads called? <laughs> um, I don't know. A congregation. I'm trying to think. There is a group of animals that's a congregation, and I can't remember. A might swarm? Be owls or something. A, a knot. A knot. A knot of toads. Not a toad. I was going to give the hint of it's also a nautical speed, but based on what you do for a living, I figure that's too easy. <laughs> All right, your question. Who was the first televised president of the United States? Um, oh, yikes. He served, I want to say, four terms. Oh, well, then FDR. Yep, you got it. You got it. Very good. More of uh, Big Dummy on the way if you would like to be a contestant. 206-803-ROCK. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Love the flexibility of working in all sorts of places? Well, working on the go seamlessly requires a strong network like T-Mobile. We have America's largest 5G network, so whether you're on a video call at the park or uploading large files at a coffee shop, we have the 5G speed you need. Whatever takes you on the go, T-Mobile's got you covered. Find out more at T-Mobile.com slash network today. Coverage not available in some areas. See 5G device coverage and access details at T-Mobile.com.
With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. In the new year, getting healthier is a big priority, especially for Hero Bread. With a new recipe using heart-healthy olive oil, Hero Bread serves up 0 to 1 gram of net carbs, up to 11 grams of protein, and high fiber in every delicious serving. And they're now using olive oil, an antioxidant-rich oil shown to reduce cholesterol and minimize the risk of heart disease. Try it today with code IHM10 for 10% off your purchase at hero.co. That's hero.co. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Little Southern cooking coming up with the head chef and Ted's meat and potatoes right after the game known as Big Dummy. 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Julie. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, Dummy! Hola, gentlemen. Hola. Julie, are you on Team Sober or Team Not Sober? Not Sober. Not Sober, Julie. What are you drinking? Oh, I just had a couple of my Bud Light. How many times have you peed? Just one. Just one, sir. Just one. Julie, you're going to make an announcement on our men's room poll. We're going to make an uh, announcement tomorrow at 4.30. So, is the announcement you're going to make, I lost my job? I got an STD from a prostitute. I have a warrant. Or I am dating my step-sibling. I'm going for the warrant. Taking the warrant. Okay. Yeah. I like how cheerfully you say that. Give me the warrant, man. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. All right, Julie, here is your question. Pocahontas was baptized and given what English name? Mary, Elizabeth, Rebecca, or Rachel? Rebecca. Damn. Oh. How did you know that? Okay. <laughs> or did you just guess? Uh, no, Rebecca, because uh, Rebecca was in the Bible, and that was kind of that I forgot. I forgot you stayed home a lot and read the Bible. That's all she does. Yeah, that's all she does. Right. Yeah, yeah. Drink Bud Light, read the Bible. Okay, that's all right. good living. All right, Julie. Look, uh, since you're one and done, we have a fifty-fifty question for you. I give you two actors. You tell me who is the taller of the two. Who is the taller of the two? This time we have Bruno Mars or Seth Green. Bruno Mars or Seth Green. Seth Green. Mars. What's that? Bruno Mars. That's all right. Bruno. Bruno Mars comes in at a whopping five foot five. Seth Green, five foot three. Making him the same height as, as Rob, Rob Schneider. Schneider. Yeah. Oh, I knew yeah. Seth Green was short. Yeah, he's short. Five three. He's also a beast. What do you mean as far as being jacked? No, just like getting hot chicks. He's been in Hollywood forever. It's like having like, David Spade, man. Yeah, like, like, I don't like, get it. Shout out to Seth Green. 5'3", <laughs> but down here, 5'3". Yeah. Game is Big Dummy, 206-803. Right? Hey, Hello, Dummy. Gordon. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 Gordon, sober or not How sober? You guys doing? We're doing good, man. Thank uh, you. Uh, if you got to think about it, you're yeah. not. All right, Gordon, you make an announcement. Yeah. Is it I lost my job? I got an STD from a hooker. I have a warrant, or I'm dating my step sibling. I'm doing step sibling today. Step sibling. All right. Wow. Okay. Ranch it out, Gordon. Good for you. It's only bad if everyone's like, yeah, no one's surprised. Mm-hmm. All right, here mm-hmm. is your question What was the original purpose of the tiny pocket in your jeans? I. Uh, What's that? Uh, it, it's for uh, uh, change. Hold on. Your watch? Inside. Yep, for your pocket watch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. It's not wide enough now. Oh, really? And they still include it because everyone carries around a pocket watch. I like that little pocket, though. I have found that it comes in handy depending what kind of drugs I have on me. That seems to be my drug carrying pocket. Amen. Yeah. You, sir? I mean, I can't think of any other time I use that pocket unless someone hands me some kind of never, drugs. Never, I've I used it for like a tiny lighter. That's not a bad, like one of those little itty bitty ones. Okay. Yeah. God, they're hard to light, man. My hands are too big for them. <laughs> <laughs> like a child. All right, your question. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, what is the best selling book of all time? <laughs> oh. Um. 
Fifty Shades of Grey. What'd you say? The Bible. It is the Bible. Shades of Grey. Nah, nope. The Bible. The Bible. Not Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, oh. That's a close second. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, I almost would probably take Harry Potter over Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but, but, but but you gotta you gotta consider all the women out there that were like really hot on that. Oh, for sure. Oh, it sold a lot. I'm just saying. The Bible kicked its ass. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Your question: What is Prince Harry's official first name? Uh. Uh, Francis. Uh, Henry. Yeah. No, just, okay. Henry. All right. Don't call me Henry. Call me Harry. Like, okay. All right. All right. Well, I'm embarrassing myself right now. All right. Don't feel bad about it, man. It's all right. All right. New question. Who is Barbie's little sister? Barbie had a little sister? Yes, she did. I, trust me, it was news to me, too. But I guess they also sold her dolls. Uh, it's also a Gilligan's Island character. Uh, um, uh, Does she have two Barbette. sisters? Barbette. What'd you say? Barbette. Said, Barbette. No, it's Barbette. Skipper. It, you knew that already. Yeah. Wait, is Chelsea older? Wait, she has two sisters. She has multiple sisters. How many sisters what? does Barbie have? I guess two. Are they in the movie? See, I was going to guess Ginger. Know. Right, you would right, think. Right. Right. That would be my guess. I'd have guessed the professor. Uh, I have to take a drink after that. Okay. Question number five. Question number five. Oh, she has three. She has three sisters. Skipper, Stacy, and Chelsea. Stacy. Stacy's a whore. Stacy. Never liked her. I think they're more of like uh, like these cartoons and stuff. Ah, so like, okay. Yeah. All right. They basic. They basic. They basic bees. They basically be. Yeah, the basic bitches. That's that's what the whole collection's called. Barbie's basic bitches. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, Skipper was introduced back in sixty four. Oh yeah? Yeah. Old broad, I like it. <laughs> you can find her on the mature tab. All right, your question. How many points does the Star of David have? Star of David. Uh uh that's uh uh Six. There you go. Oh, you, you got, got it. it. You yeah. Got it. yeah, yeah man. Good job, Gordon. Six. I always want to make a uh, movie called David. That way, when you do the press junket and they go into late night talk shows, you can say the star of David, and then they introduce you. See? Right, bring him out. Yeah. Game is big Duffy, 206 803 round. I live for that kind of thing, Miles. Hello, Jake. Welcome to the men's room. Hey. Hola. 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 Jake, are you sober or not sober? Sober. All right, Jake. Welcome to Big Dummy. Okay, our men's room poll, you get to make an announcement. Is it, I lost my job? I got an STD from a prostitute. I have a warrant, or I'm dating my step-sibling. Let's go. We want to do warrant. Warrant. Warrant it is. Warrant. What would you want to have a warrant out for uh, for your actions? Yeah, I mean, if you have to tell people, what would be the best story you could tell? What should we do? Hmm. How about bank robbery? Yeah, that was my thought. Okay. Yeah, I mean, your dad still has an open warrant in Oregon. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yes, he does. I would say the vast majority of people <laughs> that get warrants, it's probably stuff like like mine or his. Yeah, speeding ticket yeah. from 1986, but they keep they keep adding the late fees. So this thing is like well over $200,000 that they owe now. Damn. So basically, if he's pulled over in Oregon, he goes to jail. I just don't go to <laughs> Oregon. Well, see, now when he got it, it was in a rental car. We lived on the East Coast. And I remember saying, because my father was like, there's no chance I'd pay him. Uh, and yeah, they'll have the warrant. I said, well, dude, like that just seems like a bad idea. And he says, when's the next time I'm going to be in the state of Oregon? And then they moved to Washington for 10 years. And I'm like, man, so even when they moved to New Mexico, seriously, the night before they left, I said, dad, if you get to the Oregon border, switch seats with mom. Make her drive through Oregon. That's all. Right. Because they're not going to run your, your stuff if you're not driving. But yes, if they pulled you over, you're going to prison, man. And it's and ridiculous. I, yeah, and like bench warrants don't expire. No, I mean, they're, they're still no. after him. They're still after his ass. All right. But I don't think they're like warrants, like if you're a suspect, of, you know what right. I mean? Like, they're not going to come, come looking for you. They're not. 
Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale. With Hot Buys, your choice of color starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases. And shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval. No minimum purchase required. Minimum monthly payment, down payment, tax, and delivery may be required. See store for details. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out, yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and not a yada yada. Only at Metro by T Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. Love the flexibility of working in all sorts of places? Well, working on the go seamlessly requires a strong network like T-Mobile. We have America's largest 5G network, so whether you're on a video call at the park or uploading large files to the coffee shop, we have the 5G speed you need. Whatever takes you on the go, T-Mobile's got you covered. Find out more at T-Mobile.com slash network today. Coverage not available in some areas. See 5G device coverage and access details at T-Mobile.com. Oh, should we start this show? Yeah, I'm down. Just buying a car in Carvana first. Oh, for real? Yeah, it's super convenient. I already got pre-qualified in two minutes. All I had to do is answer a few questions. Ooh, that's helpful. And now just customizing my down and monthly payments. Ooh, that's a very fair deal. Yep. Boom. Just bought a car. And you get to take me to the Carvana vending machine in a couple days to pick it up. Ooh. I'm kind of busy. Visit Carvana.com to finance your next car. Financing subject to credit approval. Meet the New Balance Fuel Cell 4040 V7. The choice of elite ball players like Michael Harris. Engineered for responsiveness and agility. This versatile option is built for speed demons who demand peak performance. With fuel cell foam underfoot and a synthetic mesh upper. Experience unparalleled breathability, comfort, and a secure Cure fit as you round the bases. The nitrogen-infused fuel cell midsole propels you forward with every step, ensuring you stay ahead of the game. Learn more and purchase the 4040 at NewBalance.com. One, two, three, four. Those are numbers, but you already knew that. If you want to know what number you're going to pay each month for your car, use Kelly Blue Book My Wallet on AutoTrader. They're really good at numbers. <laughs> AutoTrader. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale. With Hot Buys, your choice of color starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases. And shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval. No minimum purchase required. Minimum monthly payment, down payment, tax, and delivery may be required. See store for details. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. He just needs to. Right. But, but if, if he gets pulled over in Oregon, right. he's going to jail. Exactly. Oh, for sure. For sure. All right, here's your question, Ted. I already know you know the answer to this. Actor Cillian Murphy plays a 1900s mob boss in Birmingham, England in what streaming series? Peaky Blinders. Boom. Got it. Nice job. All right. You're Great one and done, right? So here, let me give you the uh, which uh, actor is taller. We have Jason Alexander taking on Elijah Wood. Which one is taller, Jason Alexander or Elijah Wood? I'll let my kid answer this one. What do you think, bud? Elijah Wood. Oh, Boom. Yeah. it is That's an kid. answer. Much yeah. Elijah Daddy. Wood is a towering five foot six. Jason Alexander is five foot four. Five four. Five four. But keep in mind, he's still taller than Seth Green and Rob Schneider. Hello, Adam. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Oh, I Hola. Hola. Adam, are you sober or not sober? Sober. Sober, Adam. Welcome to Big Dummy. All right, you get to uh, make an announcement. We're going to make one tomorrow, 4.30, is your announcement. I lost my job. I got an STD from a hooker. I have a warrant, or I'm dating my step-sibling. Um, got a warrant. I'm taking the warrant. Okay. We sent some a text then. It says, I have a warrant in Vegas from 20 years ago for not using my blinker on an empty road 
while in the turning lane at midnight. Damn. That's not a place I'd want to warn. No. There's a very good chance I will have uh, police interaction, let's just say, in Vegas. <clears throat> well, you got to be careful, because, like, I know in the state of Maryland, they took some technology from the armed forces that, like, their state troopers don't even have to pull you over. They just have this thing on their car. Oh, that reads your plate, That right? scans plates as they drive down the road. So it used to be, you, if you got pulled over, they would be like, oh, you got a warrant. But now, with that thing, I think they could just, they, yeah. if they see it, they'll just pull you over. If it pegs yeah. you, yeah, they come after you. Yay, Maryland. All right, Adam, here's your question. What president's image is featured on the $2 bill? Uh, Lincoln. It would be Wait, the $5 no, hold, hold bill. On, hold on. $2 bill. That is correct. $2 is it, bill. Uh, is it Jefferson? It is, in fact, Thomas Jefferson. Okay. For a limited time, they're going to do George Jefferson. But right now, it is, in fact, Thomas Jefferson. All right, your question. Who wrote the book Jurassic Park? Creepy. Who's that? Uh, the last name is Crichton. Oh, God. They made a book out of that? Yeah, they made a book out of it. The movie was so crazy. He was like, you know what, dude? I'm going to write a book. People love it. Big Dummy! Hello, Zoe. Welcome to the men's room. Ta-ta! Hola! Zoe, sober or not sober? Oh, morning. What's that? Sober. Sober. Okay, so gotcha. Yeah. That's why it took so long to answer. All right, you're going to make an announcement. Is it I lost my job? I got an STD from a hooker. I have a warrant or I'm dating my step-sibling. STD from my baby's mama. All right. right. It's that old mate. Oh, by the way, I've been corrected. It is <laughs> Killian Murphy, <laughs> not <laughs> Cillian Murphy. <laughs> okay. All right, so here's your question. Multiple choice. What soft drink's original slogan was, quote, it'll tickle your innards? Coke, Pepsi, Mountain Dew, or Dr. Pepper? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I'm just going to go with Dr. Pepper. Mountain, Mountain Dew. Dew. It was Mountain Dew, yes. It yeah. Was, it'll tickle your innards. I that's a sales pitch. Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew was never a good pop to me. I don't like it at all, man. It was invented to chase moonshine. It was. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right, your question. From what continent do pineapples originate? Pineapples. Is that Hawaii? No, continent. What continent do they Oh, originate? wait, continent. Oh, see, you know what? I don't even know. I guess, well, 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 name, name a continent. Asia? No, it didn't make South America? Right. South America. Okay. Two cans of pineapples. South America. Yeah. All right, Zoe, your question. What disease is caused by a lack of vitamin C? Oh. Lack of sunshine. That would be vitamin D, but what is what disease is caused by the lack of vitamin C? Oh, disease. I can't even know. A lack of vitamin C? Yes. Oranges? What no, what disease? No, what disease? disease? What disease? Yes, vitamin C is oranges, but what disease is caused by a lack of you not having enough of it? A lot of English sailors used to suffer this. Oh, syphilis. Scurvy. Scurvy. Syphilis. From lack of vitamin C. I need oranges and I got an STD. August is scram. Scur- scurvy awareness month. You got to so, think uh, his wife or girlfriend's like, uh, yeah, I got syphilis from a uh, lack of vitamin C. I'm not sleeping. So are you sure you're not sober? Are you drunk? Not yet. Wow. Are you buzzed? A little bit. Are you driving? No. Okay. Uh, it's also why a nickname for English people is limeys. Yeah. Because when they were on the boats, they had to... Just suck on limes and eat them so they wouldn't get scurvy. Get scurvy, yeah. Okay. All right, your question. What yes. painter cut off his own ear? Picasso. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. And That's he, right. He gave it to the lady before he died. Yeah, he was a strange dude, man. <laughs> Famous so artist. Uh, yeah. It's all wrapped together. All right, your question. He also was, uh, he was hammered drinking absinthe and that's why absinthe got banned for so many years because it was 
at that time, people would mix it with a lot of terrible stuff. Yeah. And that's so he had a bad back. Like gasoline. Yeah. Yeah, anything. That's the, they're like, so absinthe is illegal. It's like, it's not the absinthe. It's the crap that you're cutting it. Right. It's not the wormwood. Right. It's the turpentine and other things. Nobody, yeah, nobody likes that cut. All right, your question. Who is the only non-president depicted on paper currency? $100 bill. Oh, Benjamin Franklin. Okay. There we go. Very good. Somebody uh, texted and said, are we sure this guy is sober? No, he's not sober. Are you kidding me? Tell no. Jesus. Like talking to himself, bumbling. Yeah. Is he a lunatic? Sure. Was he sober? No. <laughs> Hello, Cat. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Cat, are you sober or not sober? I am sober. All right, Cat. That's what the last guy said. Yeah, Cat, welcome to Big Dad. No, I promise I am. <laughs> okay. Cat, you're going to make an announcement. Will it be, I lost my job, I got an STD from a prostitute, I have a warrant, or I'm dating my step-sibling? I'm going to have to go with lost my job. Lost your I job. I feel like that's the easiest one to save face on, you uh, know. Well, for sure. <laughs> what uh, What is your profession, Cat? Uh, I currently am a stay-at-home mom, but before that I was a baker. Oh, Don't really? lose your job. Okay. You kind of want to lose your job now, don't you? Like, oh, damn, kids, I have to get away Cat, from okay. you and go yeah, I'm just somewhere. Saying, I feel like if you lose your job as a stay-at-home mom, yeah. something has gone uh, terribly if wrong. If your kids have fired you, <laughs> you are really messing okay. up. Cat, you're coming over to my house for a party. I said, man, Cat, since you were a baker, just bake me something, one of your specialties. What are you going to wow uh, all the guests at my party with? What are you bringing over? Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. I'll just make you a fancy cake. Okay. Hey, they'll like a fancy yeah. cake. All, all from scratch, you know, whatever you want. I'll put it in there What for makes you. the cake fancy? At what point do you say this is a fancy cake? Or is it just what it looks it like that, when you're done? Is it that expensive well, icing? Yeah, you know, yeah. You could do, I could do like an Italian buttercream, which involves making a meringue and boiling sugar and like. And including uh, armpit hair. Yeah, yeah, like all the, you know, it's not going to be a box. Can you a make a, can make. you make a coconut cream pie? Ew, man. Oh, don't, yeah. don't, oh, don't make those. that. Yes. Even if Miles likes it, don't give him all oh, that. Mm. Mu- oh, man. A coconut cream oh, yeah. pie. I really? Love it. Love it. Absolutely. God. Yes. <laughs> uh, by the way, people are pointing out, hey, man, Alexander Hamilton is also on the $10 bill. He was never president. You are correct. Yep. 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 Didn't even think about it. All right. Here's your question. Multiple choice. One, two, three, or four. How many noses does a slug have? Oh, man. Don't act like you don't know. <laughs> I should know. Why? Why uh, should you I'm know that? Be, I don't know, because I know lots of random stuff, and I feel like that should be in my... Well, you're I about to learn one that. more random thing, I get the feeling. <laughs> uh, two. <laughs> you idiot. See, well, they have the two little God. horns. I was thinking that might be their ears. That would be four, or cat. Nose, nose. Slugs have four noses. Okay. Well, I knew it was well, more than one. <laughs> I didn't even know that. All right. Your question. Who wrote the book, The Satanic Verses? Dante. Or no, I was thinking of the divine... Uh, oh, I don't know where your head was at. Crowley? Salman Rushdie. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Boy, do they love him for that. Man. Okay, let's test your knowledge here. How many elements are currently on the periodic table? Science is not my strong suit here. Uh, I mean, if you just know random crap to me, this is about as random as it gets. I know, but this, no, I, it, you know, I don't know this random crap. <laughs> uh, 51. I'll say 124. 114. Yeah. Okay. Question four. Question number four for you in honor of Miles. What breed of cat are hairless cats? Uh, Cornish Rex. Who? Cornish. Is that what they're called? Like Mr. Bigglesworth. The Minx. Sphinx. 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 Yeah. Sphinx. Oh, I think. Like Mr. Bigglesworth. Yeah. <laughs> now I gotta look that up. What was I thinking of? <laughs> All right. In what city was John F. Kennedy assassinated? I knew all the questions before you got to me. Sure you did. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I can't think. Dealey. 
Dealey Plaza. Yeah. <laughs> Grassy Knoll. Yes. I know. I uh, don't ride. I, I don't know. Pass. <laughs> I almost don't want to tell you. Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Question so six. Question number six. Before it is if, odd. That's like what? a people go there. Like I, that's not something I need to see. I know, but you'd be shocked. Like people are there. Well, and they haven't changed it. People, yeah, stand in the middle of the street, take pictures. Anyone drive a convertible? <laughs> All right, <laughs> duck lips. All right, your question: is, Before embarking on a solo career, Beyonce was a part of what R and B group? Oh, okay, well, I, I'm ashamed to say I do know this one. Destiny's Child. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it was pretty pop. Steve, like, Steve and I saw him live in concert, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super Bowl halftime. That was, yeah, that was great. Yeah. I, I don't remember anything about it. The only thing I remember was that I could not believe how quickly they set up and dismantled the stage. Mm -hmm. That was impressive. And two, maybe don't do pyro in a dome because the smoke doesn't go anywhere. In all fairness, even with an hour delay after Destiny's Child blew the power, mm -hmm. uh, that was a lot of good extra drinking time. It really was. And they, <laughs> it did take that long for the smoke to dissipate within the I mean, like It did not so, go anywhere. They, they, I mean, they still do it. I know. Right? I know. But when, when like, because... When she performs, the lights are down. You're looking at the stage. So she leaves. The lights come on before they go off again. But you look up, and you're like, we're going to die right. in here. And if they if they did not have that delay, they would have had to delay the game anyway. Just yeah, the to, players would to, not have. You couldn't see. All right, the head chef's coming up. Ted's meat and potatoes. Enjoy some southern cooking. And we got your emails coming up next from the men's room at KISW.com. Celebrate and save at Ashley's Anniversary Sale with Hot Buys, your choice of color starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep Mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases and shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval, no minimum purchase required. Minimum monthly payment, down payment, tax, and delivery may be required. See store for details. In the fast-paced world of attacking, speed is everything. And that's where the Furon 7 Plus shines. Engineered for accuracy and precision at a rapid pace, it's your secret weapon on the pitch. Experience overall comfort and precise striking, even in the game's fastest moments. The nylon outsole, with its V-shaped stud configuration, is designed for firm ground, giving you the grip you need to outmaneuver your opponents. Step up your attacking game and learn more and purchase the Furon at NewBalance.com. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger, For the ones who get it done. In the new year, getting healthier is a big priority, especially for Hero Bread, with a new recipe using heart-healthy olive oil. Hero Bread serves up 0 to 1 gram of net carbs, up to 11 grams of protein, and high fiber in every delicious serving. And they're now using olive oil, an antioxidant-rich oil shown to reduce cholesterol and minimize the risk of heart disease. Try it today with code IHM10 for 10% off your purchase at Hero.co. That's Hero.co. 99.9 KISW. The men's room returns with miles and thrill. Head chef on the way. Test meat and potatoes. Enjoy some southern cooking. First time, though, for a few emails to the men's room at KISW.com. You've got mail. You've got mail. All right, jump right into the birthdays, guys. Old Bachillas, it's a uh, leap day again. Our 10th anniversary. 40 years married. No, well, we don't do anniversaries. No. Never have. I mean, congratulations and all that, and that's, that's good. Awesome. 40 years, but uh, no, we don't do They that. say 40? 40 years. Damn. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. We don't do anniversaries. We don't do uh, birthdays of dead people. Mm -hmm. We don't do birthdays of celebrities that you don't know. We don't do birthdays of your dog. We do birthdays of people who are having a birthday. That's all we do. Yep. Oh, I see what you're saying now because of the date. You said we didn't know we'd have birthdays today, right? Yeah, February yes. 29th. Okay, my bad. You're uh, right. I was like, what the hell is he talking about? He's been saying it all week, weed. and I said, man, I bet you we get at least two. Yeah, Because maybe, if your maybe. birthday is February 29th, 29th, you definitely want to bring it up. Yes. Yeah, like yeah. I texted my buddy Josh this morning. I literally said, happy birthday, Josh. Yours is easy to remember. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> 
I can't even believe you know someone. That's what I'm saying. Like, I really thought we'd have like two birthday emails. Today. Mm-hmm. We got a ton of them. I went to high school with two dudes. The other guy's married to a girl I grew up with. This, Adam. This is a real birthday request right here. Can I get a birthday shout out to my grandson, Emerson James, born this leap day at 2.59 a.m., coming in at 9 pounds, 5 ounces, and 22 inches long. He and his mom are doing great. Welcome to the family, Emerson. Can I get an OG fish sandwich for Emerson uh, and maybe a, or a montage, uh, Ted, there, uh, from mom and dad? Love you guys. Too bad he has to wait three years for another men's room birthday wish. That from Ellen in Arlington. Two Oregon fish sandwich. Holy <laughs> J. Gentlemen, good, uh, a story. It's not a story book. Drop the beat. Could uh, Mickey and Goofy wish our baby girl of eight years, uh, Serena, a very happy birthday and let her know uh, she should spend uh, how she should spend her birthday weekend, possibly eating candy and cake, and how much allowance she should get for the toy store. I love you all. That from Juan and Yasmina. Yasmina? Yasmina. Yasmina. Well, Yasmina. God. I know you could just call her Yazzie. Yes, he I don't even think that you need an allowance at the toy store. I think you just walk <clears> in, <throat> point your fingers at everything, and say, I'll take one of each. Yeah. I mean, you're eight years old. You understand what three digits look like. So you just tell your dad, it's under 100. You don't want it. <laughs> okay. Guys, I want to say happy birthday to Opie. He's the bar manager at Earl's on the Ave, and he was born on the 29th of February. Oh, nice. I won't say how many birthdays he's had, but it's a lot less than most normal people. Please give him a your penis is too small and a fish sandwich. Uh, thanks, guys. That from Chef Paul. Two Oregon fish sandwich. Teeny tiny penis. I we need a penis teeny too tiny small. penis. The small penis. The tiny penis, Dad. Come on. Your penis is too small. Uh, oh, don't worry about it. It's just Mike, Mike's got a lot of stuff over there. I know there. it does, yeah. And then, you know, hang on, hang on. I'll find it. He's determined to get you that small penis. I that is dedication penis. right there. I'll take it. Or he knows the truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe not. You still there for that small penis? Yeah, because Mike has it. <laughs> it probably just doesn't have He should have just named it Penis. <laughs> But he didn't. I don't know why I had to say it like Make that. Make sure you yeah, talk yeah. to Mike right. about that. Hey. I'll call him during the break. Just be prepared if you hear that woman screaming about penis when I find it. I'm Where's hurting. penis? But Joel, today's my husband Eric's 36th birthday. He's been a big fan of your show since 2006. And we're also celebrating our 10th year. Uh-huh. <laughs> also celebrating our 10th year anniversary. So I just want to know how much I love him. How about an original fish sandwich and uh, the Dirty Germans? Thanks, guys. That from Ariana. Two Oregon fish sandwich. Yeah, tonight, I think you'll spend some quality time with Ariana's areolas. Say that three times fast. Yeah, good thing she's not into grande things. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, I want to give a, a leap day birthday shout out to my good buddy Mike, pronounced oatmeal. Please give him a big old bong rip. And Coach Ted giving him advice on skiing in his 50s. Thanks, guys. That from Lone Hippie. <laughs> How old is he? Just in his 50s? 54? Skiing in his 50s. All right. This advice would go to a lot of skiers, but especially in your 50s. You get out there, get in there early, get those runs in. After lunch, whether or not, I don't care if you drink or don't drink, you're 50. After lunch, one or two runs, call it a day. All right? Your legs are getting sore. You're feeling confident. That's when bad things happen. Yeah, especially if you're doing a two-dayer. Make the first day a little bit easier. Gentlemen, a rare birthday indeed. Uh, these poor souls have had to wait eight years for a birthday request. My friend Marcus, born today, I would believe that makes him around 11 years old. Uh, wishing Marcus finally a men's room shout out. How about a your penis is too small? Thank you guys. That from Raybo. Oh, Ted, all up on that yeah. penis now. She oh, wants guys. a D, and she's going to get one. My huh? wife, uh, Crystal, turns 40 today and seems to think that since she is a leap year baby, she's only 10. Could you please give her a Sarah Palin and the Dirty Germans giving good advice on how to enjoy the hot tub at Mount Rainier this weekend? Thank you, guys. That from Big Fat Matt. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's the best way to enjoy the hot tub, of course, is to have sexy time in there. But keep in mind, when you're done, you'll want to bathe. Don't make your DNA soup. Yeah, exactly. Do not do that inside the hot tub. If you do, you better bring some lube. But <laughs> but also, uh, yeah, that's going to be beautiful. Sets the tone. Yeah. Have a cocktail. The yeasty infection. Ah, <laughs> uh, Sarah Palin, Sarah huh? Sarah Palin, yeah. 
Does he have it served pound? Does he have a label of the cupcake? Oh, good suck, call. It suck it up. Uh, 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 uh. Might be. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Guys, as her classmates approach uh, 60, a girl we went to school with is 15 today. So happy birthday, Sherry. Uh, could you please give her, uh, let's see here. So suck it yeah. up. It's cupcake. suck it up. Right, suck it up, yeah. of course. Now well, let's see here. Uh, a couple of sound bites there, uh, Ted, and uh, some jokes uh, from Miles. I think everyone has a, a birthday today. Deserves something as rare and special as they are. Happy birthday, Sherry. That from Sherry's classmates from Hilder Pearson Elementary. Damn. Please clap. Stop me if you've heard this one. I actually don't. It's important. Okay. <laughs> If a leap year has 366 days, what do you call a year with 365 days? A year? A light year. <laughs> what do you call a frog born on February 29th? What do you call a frog born on February 29th? A, a leaping leap fro frog? A leap frog. A leap frog. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How did the leap year party go, guys? I don't know. Last it for four years? It was jumping all night long. Jumping. <laughs> and what does a captain do on leap day? Ooh, I certainly don't know. Jump ship. <laughs> Boo, bitches, long time listener. Did they spot. make an exception? It's always the captain has to go down with the ship. It's like, unless it's February 29th. Right. <laughs> right. Hi, guys. Thanks for keeping the uh, South Side entertained on our afternoon commute. I would like to give myself a birthday shout out. Yes, a leap year baby turning 14. Uh, let's see. Quick, please, uh, uh, if you could, test uh, the Ted Smith's math skills. So if you're 14 in leap years, that means you're 56? Yeah. 56? That's my assumption. There you go. Uh, let's see here. Can I get the dirty Germans talking about how uh, my older wife will take advantage of me tonight? Thanks, guys. That from Bill. Yeah, she will take advantage of you by allowing you to watch her with us. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, she's just be careful with this older woman. But, yeah, it's the fact you have to watch her make it even worse. Yeah, don't worry. We'll do it yeah. slow and sloppy like you. Yeah, and I'll keep eye contact mm. with you. Guys, not sure if I should say it's my 16th trip or my 16th around the sun. I'm a uh, leap uh, day baby. Wait a four years to hear you say this shout out. I'd love to hear uh, the bear with the eating disorder or arguing with the tuba man about who weighs more and needs to... Uh, uh, lose more weight and why they like to eat so much and then make up and decide who has all the best all-you-can-eat buffets. Rock on, bitches. That from your loyal listener, Lenny. And Tacoma, Lenny, have no idea what you're talking about, but here's no a birthday clue. song. <laughs> happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you. Bitch. Yaz, a Dirty Germans, brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's world-famous sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, uh, Schweinefleisch. Time to open wide and sample Ted's meat. And potatoes. Now, here's your host, head chef of the Men's Room, the Ted Nougat. Head chef in the house. Thank you, folks. Thank you. To see everybody in here today. So what I have today is a list, and this comes to us uh, from Southern uh, Southern Living. Uh, they identified the most iconic recipes in the South. All right. Now we were talking earlier in the office because it's like, what's considered the South, right? And like, what's Southern food versus like Creole food versus like Texas barbecue? So I did a little research. Technically, the South is still anything under the Mason-Dixon line. Okay. So they would count Maryland Arizona. as Southern. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is, I don't, Maryland is an odd little state. Pennsylvania is definitely in the North, but I always think as a Marylander, it's like, ah, we're not Virginia. Right. And, and when you go to the South and you're from Maryland, they will remind you, you are not Southern. Right. Very quickly. Yeah. And there's good, there's great food in Maryland. It's just not. Uh, you don't think of it as Southern it not, food. I mean, yeah. there, there's good stuff. But not all of it. Uh, Southern. With, with Texas, I'll say this. They still count Texas, though, as part of the South as well. Just in my mind, I always feel like Texas is just its own thing. That's and what they want you to think as that, well. That's what they want. That's what they get. I don't, I don't put them in any category other than it's just Texas. Right. Yeah. And it's weird. It's just, there's 10 things on this list. But honestly, 
A lot of them I wouldn't have picked as iconic Southern foods. Okay. But maybe I'm wrong. Uh, all right. First one on list, number 10, was Frito Pie. That's a Get southern, a bag that, of Fritos. That, that's a southern food. Right. Snack size, snack size bag of Fritos. <laughs> right. Don't get the full size bag. <laughs> Throw in some chili, uh, cheddar, che- sharp cheddar, chopped onion, lettuce, sour cream, and you have yourself a portable meal. Also, the walking taco. Again, though, I never heard of that one. I thought that was a Texas thing. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So, but again, I guess Texas part of the South. Uh, here you go. Shrimp and okra. You can yeah, put it in. Sh- you can put it in a so. soup. You can put it in gumbo. Uh, they're always together. I mean, I guess I'd try okra again. I I don't know. I, I just think don't like. Okra. Like, put to me, it, shrimp does not need okra's <clears throat> help. Okra needs shrimp's help. Like shrimp's mm-hmm. doing the okra side. Okra, okra is definitely the, the 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 southern vegetable in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Right, and when it's, it's in like a like gumbo it. or a soup, but I mean, I I remember we would just eat it or have like cheese on it, like. Yeah. I just didn't think it was that good. And to me, if you say shrimp and, I would go grits. grits. Mm-hmm. That's where I thought you were going to go. Yep. Yeah, Cheesy exactly. grits. Uh, next on the list of these are the most iconic recipes of the South, banana pudding. Is that a Southern thing? It is. Huh. You okay. see a lot of uh, Southern, you know, especially soul food restaurants. Uh, homemade pudding plus a meringue topping. It's one of the most well-known of all Southern dishes. Sounds good to me. I love banana. Have you never had it? I've had banana pudding. I like banana cream pie. I like any of those. You also like of, coconut cream I pie. I like banana bread. I, I don't like, like the coconut, but I'm with Miles. Banana cream pie, I'm in. Okay. Right? Good stuff. It is. Yeah, banana, banana bread is outstanding. Yeah, banana pudding. I mean, look, banana to me is, again, one of the top fruits. Banana. Have you guys ever had And then ban- you use it in, in food, other foods. It's like, let's go. Have you guys ever had banana ice cream, which is a rarity and hard to find? Way back in the as a kid, I do remember eating. I just remember one point in time I had a banana milkshake, and I but I thought I was I died and gone to heaven. You ever had banana milk? No. Hey, you get like strawberry milk. Uh, there used to be a banana milk too, like with okay. the powder mix. Yeah, uh, I I think it was already made. Oh, already made. Okay. Yeah, you got to really check out the uh, flavored milk aisle. Uh, next on the list, peach cobbler. Of yeah, course. for of sure. Course. For sure. <laughs> right? I like this. They say, we, rec- we recommend you enjoy a hot one out of the oven with a small dollop of vanilla ice cream. I will say again, I, w- I like to watch food shows. I've watched a lot of shows on Southern cooking, soul food cooking. Some of the places that ha- are world famous for their cobbler, man, the amount of sugar they are putting in there. You is, don't want to look. It's on food between sugar and butter. Like, if you have any health concerns, don't eat Southern food. No, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, just like, seriously, man, and don't other, even think about it. On the other side, it's bacon fat or lard. Yeah, exactly. Now, this one, I didn't really know this one. I had to actually look it up. Hummingbird cake. What is that? Hummingbird. I hope it's made of a real hummingbird. Uh, hummingbird cake is a banana pineapple spice cake. Uh, originally, it started in Jamaica and then became a popular dessert in the Southern United that's States. That's one of those glazed cakes. So probably, look, so probably. I bet the pineapple goes on top, and it's got that glaze. No, 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 no. It's not. Uh, it looks almost like a carrot cake. Oh, no kidding. Really? So it's a dry yeah. cake. Hmm. What's that? It's a dry cake. It is, and then it's got like a white frosting on it. All right. You're thinking of, uh, like pine, like upside yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna look like that. Uh, skillet cornbread. Yep. Of course. Yep. Right, yep. and like you can make it either way. There, there's there's an old dude I follow. I think he's in Texas. And uh, he's always like, what are we cooking today? <laughs> and he's got all these old school pans and everything, but he always ends it with, and of course, a piece of MF and cornbread. <laughs> 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 now, this one, as far as this list of iconic uh, recipes of the South, it was also a movie, Fried Green Tomatoes. Oh, yeah, yep. for sure. Without question. Thrill, do you like fried green tomatoes? I I don't love I can eat it if it's there. I would not order it, but yeah, I've had it. And they're I, fine. I, it's I, fine. I, I, man, I've had them before with, uh, like, uh, on Hawaiian rolls, like many sliders with a fried green tomato and then some crab on top. Yeah, and that sounds good. And the uh, texture is really good on those tomatoes. There's a nice little crunch to it. So it's kind of... It's kind of like a Parmesan-ish type of, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like an eggplant sure. parmesan kind of... I mean, look, I'm not a huge fan of tomatoes. If you give me a fried green tomato sandwich, I love them. I'm with you. I, I don't know if it's a little bit different, right? Because they're not as ripe. I guess. So maybe the flavor's different. Maybe just the tech, because tomato texture is weird to me as well. Some people put them on the grill and just do them that way. Other people bread them. I, I prefer them breaded, but. Well, you should bread them. Yeah. I mean, this is fried green tomatoes. Yep. That dude's yep. just grilling yep. tomatoes, mm-hmm. which I'm sure is still good. Yep. But yeah, fried green tomatoes are delicious. Uh, German chocolate cake with extra 
coconut pecan frosting, they say. Okay. Right. Well, the pecan, the pecan, yeah. yes. German chocolate cake uh, is ubiquitous, again, in southern food. But you got to remember, there was a ton of Germans, like me and Miles always talk about, in South Carolina, they have that mustard-based barbecue sauce. Yeah. Because there's a ton of Germans that end up kind of down in the south or in the Appalachians. And there's a, like, it, it makes sense. I always forget that. That once I realized how many Germans had moved there, you're like, oh, that's why they're using so much mustard and this and that and brought over the chocolate cake. Okay. Uh, the next two are probably, t- you know, top tier southern foods. Buttermilk biscuits. Hell yeah. Yeah. And biscuits, I will say, biscuits, though, have a wide range of good and bad. You know, like, people like biscuits, but, man, you can have some really bad dry ones. If they're dry, yes, dude, it, right, it's horrible. And then you go some places, and you're like, Jesus, this is what a biscuit tastes like? A biscuit should be able to be broken apart <laughs> in about five different sections when you pull it apart. Right. And if it doesn't flake <laughs> off like that, there was no lard used, there was no Crisco used. It's not a flaky buttermilk biscuit. It's just a big lump. You might as well have made a damn scone. <laughs> yeah, basically, a bad yeah. biscuit's a scone. <sighs> and I think a good, fresh biscuit with apple butter is pretty hard to beat. Mm. And then last, number one on the list, baked mac and cheese. I like they note uh-huh. here, it's, don't get it out of a box. It's got to be, you got to make it from scratch and then oven crisp uh, in about 45 minutes. Uh, and, and look, I know a lot of people that like mac and cheese that also will still eat the box stuff. The box stuff. It's yeah. kind of like we always talk about sometimes, like, I love Mexican food. I also love Taco Bell. I know there's a difference. Right. They're, they're related. Mm-hmm. Right. So they're I think like there's a lot cousins. of cousins. Pe- yeah. You could go, you can go all out and make your own mac and cheese, which is great. Sometimes people make mac and cheese. You're like, holy cow. Yeah. And then also, sometimes you just want the box mac and cheese. Also, a quick cheat code. I take it out of the pan if you want or whatever. If you're making barbecue, Costco has a delicious mac and cheese. They oh, do. David, yeah. I can vouch for that. Yes, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you, Head Chef. Uh, we appreciate it. There you go. Ted's meat and potatoes. Oh, someone says here on the text, um, uh, breaded fried green tomato BLT sandwiches are the bomb. Yeah. I can believe that. That sounds amazing. In. Shout of the day is coming up. You are listening to the men. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom. Crop out. Yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and not a yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. Love the flexibility of working in all sorts of places? Well, working on the go seamlessly requires a strong network like T-Mobile. We have America's largest 5G network, so whether you're on a video call at the park or uploading large files at a coffee shop, we have the 5G speed you need. Whatever takes you on the go, T-Mobile's got you covered. Find out more at T-Mobile.com slash network today. Coverage not available in some areas. See 5G device coverage and access details at T-Mobile.com. Have you experienced Slotzilla? The world's ultimate zip line is at Fremont Street Experience in fabulous downtown Las Vegas. Enjoy the thrill with two ways to fly. Take off on the lower zip line from seven stories high and fly three blocks down Fremont Street. The upper zoom line launches flyers superhero style from 11 stories, traveling five blocks under the world's largest video screen. Come zip or zoom Vegas style. VegasExperience.com for tickets. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Coming up here in just minutes, we will drink a toast for the shot of the day. And we do have your headlines on the way at 5.50. But first, quick check-in with Mike Hawk and some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's Mike Hawk. He's definitely not working on him because Mike's not here. Oh! As you guys know, Leap Day only comes once every four years, so it's pretty fun until you realize you are working for free today. 
If you are on salary, you're working one extra day this year for the same money. And that's often still the case even when the 29th falls on a weekend. Now, in normal years, six days of the week happens uh, 52 times and one happens 53 times. But in leap years, two days happen 53 times. This time, we get an extra Monday and Tuesday, lucky us. But even when it was on a Saturday four years ago, two extra days were Wednesday and Thursday. So if you get paid hourly, none of this matters. It only affects people who make a set amount per year. But there's an ongoing debate on whether leap day should actually be an official paid holiday. Or if you should get maybe some kind of extra bonus because you worked an extra day. You should. Yes. Yeah. I mean, right? It's real simple. If you work an extra day, if your boss said, hey, if you work Monday through Friday and it's like come in Saturday, you would expect yeah. to be compensated. And uh, maybe you don't yeah. celebrate. Or you expect time and a half. Yes, you do. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. Or double time, maybe. And maybe you don't celebrate to leap day so much, but there are some deals out there. Here are a few. Chipotle is offering free guacamole because, well, why the hell not? Holy right. guacamole! It's not totally free like a lot of the deals. You need to be a member of their loyalty program. Oh, order it through on. the app. You also need to order an entree, but you get free uh, guac when you walk out. Free guac. Taco Bell is offering rewards members a crunch wrap for $2.29 in their app. Get it? two twenty nine. That is the date. All right. So there's what is that deal again? It is a uh, crunch wrap for $2.29. Yeah. Taco Bell. Normally it's one eighty. 7-Eleven is offering customers any combination of five wings for that same price, $2.29. Hooters giving loyalty members select appetizers, $2.29. Krispy Kreme has a promotion where you can get an original glazed dozen for $2.29. I think the- Hooters is also doing uh, Coronas for $2.29. Really? Oh, hell yeah. Right. Unfortunately, we have to go all the way to Vegas. I know. I <laughs> saw him tweeting about it this morning. It didn't make me any sense to me. So I'm like, it's two twenty. It's mm-hmm. yeah. So Krispy Kreme, you get uh, a dozen original glazed for two twenty nine. You have to purchase a regular dozen at uh, full price. But so it's for the it. office. Yeah. Krispy. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. depends on who you are. Yeah. yeah. A Krispy Kreme is also showing some love to Leap Babies, who are born today. If that's you... I'm a Leap Baby. You get a free original glazed dozen, no questions asked. A dozen donuts for free. All today right. Today is your birthday. It's a pretty big deal. Oh, I thought you meant it had the baby had to be born today. No, if it's your birthday today, you get a free glazed dozen. That's awesome. No strings attached. You don't have to buy anything else. Well, I mean, I think they're just, their heads and their beds like... It's very few people, and we do it once every four years. And also, we can take the hit, man. Once you walk into a place, it's like Costco's deal on hot dogs right. or slices. You're of pizza. leaving with more you're than gonna, that. <laughs> you're going to spend some cash. Or at least go back again. Wendy's is offering customers a free Cinnabon pull apart today, Ooh. which is part of their breakfast menu that goes into the day. I didn't even know they had that. Yep. How did I know that and you didn't know that? They, uh, Usually, they, you're the well, fast food they, like knowledge they source. They did a combination. They got together and, and, and basically, Wendy said, we want to sell your Cinnabons. They're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool. Ah, right. huh. you make them better than anyone else. <laughs> yeah, we'll sell. Uh, some places are offering a 29% off select items for February 29th, including Marco's Pizza, which I've never heard of. Really? Uh, no. They got the commercials on all the time. I've, I've uh, never I've had I've never one, been to one. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm a thrill. You see the they commercials. Advertise I didn't see the constantly. commercials, but I just didn't. I've never seen one. Noodles and Company. You guys? Is that an Italian place? Uh, uh, I bet I you're Asian. Asian. Yeah. All right. Okay. I feel I mean, like if Ita- you say pasta, you, you're saying Italy. If you say noodles, you're speaking Asian. And, uh, I mean, the Italians got them from Asia. Papa yeah. Murphy's Marco has Polo. deals. Yeah. Smoothie King has deals. Staples is offering wards member a free passport photo. Damn. Wow, thanks for that. Uh, By the way, Ted, you'll appreciate this. One of the chefs I worked for, I don't know if she ever published the book, but she was writing, uh, I don't want to call it like an old school cookbook, but when she was explaining it to me, she goes, all right, who introduced uh, pasta, essentially, to Italy? I said, well, Marco Polo. She goes, right. What did they eat before that? Mm Mm-hmm. So she was writing a cookbook based on before these things were introduced Potatoes? to this part of uh, mo- man like Mediterranean diet, olive, yeah. seafood, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But pasta has dominated their dishes. She's like, right, but that's a Chinese thing. So she was writing a cookbook, researching all these different places where you think you know their cuisine, and she goes, right. But before this was introduced, what do they eat? And I'm like, kind of okay. interesting.
Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale. With Hot Buys, your choice of colors starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases. And shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval. No minimum purchase required. Minimum monthly payment, down payment, tax, and delivery may be required. See store for details. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out, yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and nada yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. Love the flexibility of working in all sorts of places? Well, working on the go seamlessly requires a strong network like T-Mobile. We have America's largest 5G network, so whether you're on a video call at the park or uploading large files at a coffee shop, we have the 5G speed you need. Whatever takes you on the go, T-Mobile's got you covered. Find out more at T-Mobile.com slash network today. Coverage not available in some areas. See 5G device coverage and access details at T-Mobile.com. Over 13,000 people in the Seattle area are homeless. Brian is helping to make a difference through Seattle's Union Gospel Mission. I was addicted to meth, sleeping in my car, and I couldn't take it anymore. I got off drugs, earned a bachelor's degree in theology, and have almost completed a master's in counseling. Today, I'm the director of outreach at the mission. And grace will lead me home. To hear more, volunteer or donate, visit UGM.org. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, For the ones who get it done. Introducing Coco Golf Signature Shoe. More than just a tennis shoe, it's a fusion of 90s inspired style and cutting edge performance technology. With its sleek mid cut silhouette, it's designed to enhance speed and power on the court. The multi piece upper construction delivers high energy return for players of all levels. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, the Coco CG1 empowers you to dominate the game. Learn more and purchase the Coco CG1 at NewBalance.com. With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the men's room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Today, there are some common things that might irritate you a little bit. Here are four of them. The same joke every four years. If you're born today, you'll hear, Happy 10th birthday from uh-huh. multiple people today. If you're born in uh, 1984, uh, Not all Leap Day babies love those kind of uh, theme parties or jokes because they're missing out on oh, Dude, it's my birthday. Can exactly. I just have a birthday? This is my birthday today. So just <laughs> seriously, just happy birthday. Yeah. Thanks. Our computer systems and I mean, online It's fun forums. for the rest of us, though. It is fun it is. for the rest but of us. Te- I mean, right. I know you. it's either the 28th or, or March 1st, but technically, it is, you only get a birthday every four years. It's true. Our computer systems, online forums, often don't recognize February 29th as even a real day. So that's <laughs> great. If What? Oh, yeah, it's invalid. Uh, <laughs> if, you know, you go stro- scrolling through the, the numbers. Oh, uh, yeah, when you have to like, right. sign up for something or DMV, whatever. DMV, yeah. same thing. The DMV does DMV not has issues. Come on, guys. Problems getting carded. A ton of Leap Day babies have had bouncers accuse them of fake IDs Jeez. because there is no February 29th. Oh, my God. And, of course, the <laughs> one that really bums everyone out, Facebook ignores you a lot of the time. <laughs> Some Leap Day babies celebrate on the 28th. Some prefer March 1st. But either way, they kind of once you put that in, 
that's going to be your birthday because three out of the four years it is. Yeah. Or that's when you're going to celebrate. All right. Yeah. Because I said to you earlier today, I looked at my Facebook. I was like, hmm, only three of my friends had a birthday. So if you put it in as your real day, then that means the alert will only go out once every four years because that's the algorithm they have. Uh, by the way, regarding Marco's Pizza, right? Because we've all seen the ad. Someone here says, I looked it up after seeing the commercial so many times during football games. Marco's Pizza appears to be a Midwest slash East Coast joint with some locations down south. I think the closest one might be in Nevada. Okay. Yeah, and I think... Next I to w- the Hooters. I want to say up in like Muckleteo... I don't know if that counts as Edmonds. They just got a Jet Pizza, which is famous in the Midwest. Jet oh, did they? Pizza. Yeah. yeah. I've heard of that. It's, yeah. It's a bigger chain it's like everywhere De- else. like Detroit style. Okay. Oh, no, All right. right. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, by the way, happy 25th birthday to Mary Forsythe of Oklahoma. She's actually 100 today, but she is the oldest Leap Day baby in the world. Born February 29th, 1924. You think she makes it to the next Leap Year? No. Oh. No, I don't. <laughs> Meanwhile, oh. wow. I, no, no, I'm no, just saying how cold it was. No, no, no. Meanwhile, dozens of leapers, guess what they're doing? They're celebrating right now, now together on a cruise in the Bahamas. They also did this in 2020. 70 people signed up for this time. It's the the Leap Day Cruise. All right. Some have never met another Leap Day baby before. They all get together and they party on a cruise ship. I get that. What else do we have here? Oh, an Ohio woman. Her dog went missing five years ago. But she just got him back at an adoption event this month. She said she never stopped looking and spotted him after he ended up in a shelter. They posted photos on Facebook two weeks ago. She knew it was her dog. And when they reunited, it was one of those videos. That's how you know. Where you go, man, the dog is more excited than the person. Because like, oh, no, i got to take care of this thing again. <laughs> Here's a fun one. A woman near Seattle finally checked an old lottery ticket after her husband constantly nagged her and nagged her about it. It hit for $135,000. Yeah. Boom. It had been sitting in the house collecting dust for five months. But because of her husband. Now they have that. Nagging money. and nagging. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, here's a crazy story which I cannot wrap my head around. Speaking of Ohio, a woman in Ohio claims her Stanley Cup saved her life after a stray bullet from a drive-by was shot into her home. Jesus. The cup stopped the bullet which she was behind and she escaped with just a small blemish. After nice. The bullet her Stanley off. Cup. Her Stanley Cup. Which, a lot of questions there but I don't <laughs> have That's why idea. you should keep a flask in your front pocket. That's right. That's why I do it, Ted. Yeah, so, yeah protect yourself. Uh, a naked woman went on a mini rampage in L.A. this week attacking several people at Venice Beach until someone stopped her. Another lady with a medieval uh, medieval style spiked club. Jesus. It is unclear how this <laughs> insanity <laughs> ended. But Venice uh, Beach. It seems like it's just chaos down there. It's this is a little weird even for Venice Beach. But I, I my understanding too is it might just be like a certain section of that beach and uh, boardwalk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, like people right. have ideas about Seattle, but there's a lot of Seattle that doesn't have Crazy people running around. There's Third Avenue. We get it. Attention, That's not all uh, Attention if you drive a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Chrysler recalling more than 330,000 of the vehicles because of a steering wheel issue that may cause drivers to lose control. Different car, but I got that Jeep Rubicon. Yeah. Uh, the rental. Death wobble every single time that I drove it. Are there right. any cars not currently being recalled? I don't know. Oh my God. I feel like every day it's like Honda, Toyota. Now we got Jeep, Tesla. You name it. Basically, if you own a car, just take it back to the shop because there's something wrong. Exactly. Uh, as they say, uh, as far as the stereotype of television and sitcoms, what is the stereotype? You got a hot wife with a fat... Bumbling husband, right? Oh, yeah. Husband. That's a classic one. Mike and Molly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Simpsons. But they say maybe it's not that unrealistic after all. A new study found men are more likely than women to let themselves go and gain weight as kidding. soon as they get married. Men were about 5% more likely to become overweight within the first five years of marriage compared to if they'd stayed single. And almost 3% more likely to become then obese. Same not true for women. Once pregnancy, other stuff got factored in. The numbers for women were low enough to be statistically irrelevant. Uh, The results showed that once men get married, they're like, yeah, F it. And they eat more, exercise less. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse as marriage goes on. For the man. Not well, I mean, right. Like, think about it this way: not hunting for sport or whatever, but like, 
like back in the day, like you hunt down an animal, and then when you're done eating it, you go hunting again. Yes. This guy got married. He's done hunting. Uh, That's exactly it, man. Diet and exercise habits for wives. My wife never had hairy legs until we got married. Yeah. They stay pretty much the same as when they were uh, they were single. I'll so. shave my legs in September. When we yeah. were dating, all the time. Right. Also, sometimes I feel like there's some women that just don't seem to change a lot, like size wise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if there's some, like if you're already thinking like, ah, screw it, it's Wednesday, let's get a pizza, and then she's like, want to get a pizza? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm in, huh? <laughs> And uh, do you guys consider yourselves, I guess it's it comes in streaks, uh, more lucky or unlucky in life? I think overall I'm lucky. I do too, but there are Because most of misfortune I, I directly am responsible for. I can I can attribute it to something, but when something fortunate happens, I'm like, okay. good for me. They say the average... I'm going to not answer that right now. Yeah. <laughs> the average person experiences 543 unlucky events a year. A year? That's just over 10 a week. But 1 in 10 think leap years are luckier than normal years. Superstitious people, so maybe I'll have less uh, bad luck this year. I you have an know. extra day for something to go wrong. Yeah. I mean. People were asked to name the unluckiest things that could happen to you on any given day. And we have 10 of those. Are you ready? All, All right. right. Not that it matters here. But getting caught in the rain without an umbrella. Now, if you were out last right. night at about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, that would have been horrific. It would in my be, neighborhood, it absolutely dumped. There was a river of water coming down the it, street Oh, it was last pouring night. last night. But I do crazy. give Seattle credit on the fact that it does rain so much. Almost no, everyone I know owns an umbrella. I don't know anyone that uses it. Right? Yeah. You already have the rain gear. You got the hood. You just go out, put your hands in your pocket, and deal. And yeah, I'm, I mean, like, when I was at Houston for the national championship game, right? That day, there's like tornado warnings, this and that. And my one buddy, he was like, who lives in Texas now, but he's like, you brought a shell? And I was like, yeah, I'm from Seattle. Yeah. I take that shell anytime we I travel. We got it, dude. That's our umbrella. You go to a restaurant, you got your standby, you got your things, and they put the specialty sheet out. And like, oh, man, they got that, all that stuff. You try to order something in a restaurant, you're unlucky because they're out of it. <laughs> oh, uh, last year at Christmas. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were out of a lot of stuff. And then the... Uh, Oh, I'll throw what's the fancy rice dish? Uh, fancy the, risotto? risotto. Risotto. I've been talking about it in here for a month, and they were like, "That doesn't start till 3. <laughs> I was like, "God, <laughs> <damn. laughs> uh, tripping or falling down in public in front of others. Uh, unlucky events that you'll deal with. Yeah, that sucks. Losing a competition or contest, like a, a lottery ticket that doesn't hit, or if you have some kind of thing going on at work. I don't know I, if you're unlucky that you were directly in the odds. Yeah. I would say a contest. I feel like if it's competition, that's up to you to win it. Sure. Unlucky event you'll face. A car drives by and splashes you with water as a pedestrian. Uh, Yep. Been there. Classic. We also have the flat tire, which doesn't happen very often, but it does. You're lucky if you remember how to change it, and it's a pain in the ass. I remember how to change it, but that was uh, the first time I was going to broadcast school. And the first time I was ever mentioned on the radio, I was changing a tire on I-83 in Baltimore. Basically, it'd be like I-5. And I... The car's on, and I hear the radio. I was, yeah. quote, the trouble spot yeah. on I-83 North. As far as your unlucky events, these are not the biggest deal in the world, but they will burn you, and they will pee you off when you get hit with every red light on whatever God, way it's annoying. you're yes. going to yeah. wherever you are going. Sometimes you get them all. It's your lucky day. Other days, it's just like, you got to be kidding. I'm every this is the start life. of a horrible day. Spilling anything on yourself comes in at number three. Stepping in dog poop at number two. <laughs> and yep. the number one thing that people say is the unluckiest thing that can happen is you lose something. Yeah. Your wallet, your phone, your keys, anything important. Although, is that really bad luck or were you just not paying attention to where you put some? Eh, it's more of that. Either way. There you go. All right, uh, coming up, we do have your headlines on the way at 5.50. In the meantime, let's get a contestant on the line for Profile This at 206-803-ROCK. Have we met it to drinking time? Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Six time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Steve at Thrill Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. And today, well, we toast communications. All right, let's go back to Tuesday night. NHL hockey game between the Philadelphia Flyers and the Tampa Bay Lightning. I do not know what was going on at this particular game, but much like the uh, (coughs) blackout Super Bowl, one side of the rink was darker than the other. Nearly half of the concourses and suites, they're experiencing outages, as were the broadcast booths 
and the press box, the scoreboard, the game clock, the public address system, they're all out and did not return to working order until midway through the second period. However, one thing was working. That would be the referee's microphone. They assumed that they were not working because of power outages were going on everywhere. Yeah, that's right. So as the game goes on early in the second period, lightning forward Brandon Hagel. He assisted Nick Paul for a game-tying goal. As NBC Sports Philadelphia replayed the goal, a very audible voice chimed in from one of the officials. It was a very cool shot. It was a very good shot. And you hear the word, F me, which was followed by another voice in the background asking if they were live. Yeah, that was the referee in the game. (laughs) <laughs> so he was just impressed by the goal. He's impressed by the goal, right? And he just had the reaction, but his mic was on. But I guess normally he wouldn't say that because he knows his mic is on. But because of all the power outages, they're now thinking their mics don't work either. Because again, they can barely do the broadcast. The press boxes can't do it. There's no public address announcer. So he's just like, F me. And then you hear the other one. Hey, man, are we live? Yeah, you were live. It was caught. But don't worry. The embassy affiliate there, they covered for you, just saying, uh, clearly. They did not realize that their mics were still open. That's kind of awesome, though. I appreciate the ref just being that excited. Like, that's I a hell of a man. goal. It is a hell of a goal. I'm a guy that knows all the rules. Like, that's a good shot. Now we know it's a real good shot. Plus, your brother could do it, right? What's that? Like, if he's, let's say he's uh, refereeing a Seahawks game and, and Geno Smith drops a dime. Like, he can be like, good pass, Geno. He could absolutely say that. They would just prefer, but at least they control their own mics. Right. So one thing about the NFL, right? It's It ain't on until you turn it on. Although a lot of guys don't realize it is on, and you'll hear that occasionally. Uh, So we pour this booze, and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! Yummy. So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitchola! The Men's Room presents Profile This. That's Stephen Throwhill. Could you please, everyone, how Profile This is played? I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story. Something that happened right here. I'm playing an Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Our caller that was on the line just dropped off the line. Perfect time to drop off. Just All right, Ted, me and you. So it is. All right. So today, gentlemen, you have your choice of bite me. In other words, what did someone find in their food? Interior decorating, where you guessed the foreign object that ended up on the inside of someone. And where the hell is my other story? I believe. Uh, animalize this. There we go. Where you guessed the animal responsible for causing animal, the problem. Animal, Ted. <laughs> All right. The owner of an electronic road sign right here in Washington State sent a message warning drivers about angry animals ahead was the work of pranksters. The sign it was at the side of Spokane's Northwest Boulevard near Audubon Park. Displayed the message during the Wednesday morning commute and the city public's work department officials said they had no information on the sign or of any angry animal activity in the area. Mike Beggs, the co-owner of the Spokane Traffic Control, uh, which was contacted by Public Works to provide the sign for a construction project, said the sign was hacked by unknown pranksters. He said someone twisted the lock on the back of the sign, opened it up, and was able to access its controls and change the display message. He says, quote, That's the first time that happened that I can remember. Somebody had to know what they were doing. Now, he did say he was relieved the message was something inoffensively humorous instead of much worse things they could put up there. He says, quote, we are fortunate that it was not rated R. But the question is, what animal were the pranksters warning were angry and ahead? Was it squirrels, raccoons, beavers, or koala bears? So squirrels, raccoons, beavers, or koala bears, if you're driving through Spokane on that day, angry blank ahead. That's so stupid, you can't even get mad. Uh, Based on the fact that uh, squirrels, raccoons, and beavers are native to that area, the ridiculous thing would be to put up uh, koala bears. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to go squirrels. Dangerous squirrels ahead. That was my other option. Angry. Angry. They didn't say they're dangerous. Uh, Check that. I'm going to go beavers. Beavers. Because it's angry? (laughs) Yeah. Really? Uh, Yeah. Uh, Okay, Uh maybe I was right or wrong. Uh Uh-oh, maybe I was wrong. (laughs) That makes sense. Angry Beavers. Uh, yeah. Okay. Wait, are you sticking with or are you going Beavers? No. I mean, they're no, both no, 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 I can't steal his train of thought because that's stealing the answer if it's right. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, it makes sense on the, on the joke aspect. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. you're covering both bases. Right, right, right. Okay. What was the warning for motorists? Was it squirrels ahead, raccoons, beavers, or koala bears? We'll find out next. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale. With Hot Buys, your choice of color starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases. And shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval, no minimum purchase. Purchase required. Minimum monthly payment, down payment, tax, and delivery may be required. See store for details. Look around. You can find cars like these on Auto Trader. New cars, used cars, electric cars, maybe even flying cars. Okay, no flying cars, but as soon as they get invented, they'll be on Auto Trader. Just you wait. Auto Trader. With LinkedIn Jobs, we tap into a network of more than a billion professionals to help you find quality professionals quickly and easily for any role you need. Marketing wizards? Found them. Software engineers? Found. That project manager I could never seem to hire? And found. LinkedIn Jobs quickly matches your roles with candidates with the right skills and experience. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your first job for free and get started at linkedin.com slash decide. That's linkedin.com slash decide. Terms and conditions apply. Ready to check one off the bucket list? Slotzilla is the world's ultimate zip line at Fremont Street Experience in fabulous downtown Las Vegas. Launch 35 miles per hour from the largest slot machine in the world. Zoom over thousands of onlookers and under Viva Vision, the biggest digital display ever. Bask in the glow of the neon marquees of the original strips, iconic casinos. Visit VegasExperience.com for Slotzilla. That's VegasExperience.com. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Our category is uh, Animal Eyes. It's on profile. This uh, a message warned motorists of an animal, a uh, digital message there on the highway mm -hmm. over in Spokane about uh, animals on the roadway and to be careful. The sign was actually hacked. Question is, what was the animal in question? Was it squirrels ahead, raccoons, beavers, or koala bears? Yes, indeed. That's the very question that I posed to you fine gentlemen. Miles, you want koala bears? Because it's the most ridiculous. But it was not koala bears. Ted, you want angry beavers, which a bunch of people pointed out as an old cartoon. But no. not the answer. Oh, don't tell me it was squirrels. Not raccoons. Huh, just raccoons. angry raccoons ahead. Warning yeah. or danger, angry raccoons ahead. Right. I mean, that seems like an animal that might attack you. Yeah, for sure. Now for all TV news all the time, it is time for TV Time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, the Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. Ah, oh, no explosion? You got an explosion. Oh, there there it, it is. I didn't hear it in there. Gotta have the explosion. All right. Obviously, everybody in here is a sports fan. Has anybody been watching the uh, the documentary on the New England Patriots? I have uh, not. No, I've read a little something about it, but no. It's an Apple TV Plus docu series, The Dynasty New England Patriots. I think that probably goes back to how many of us actually watch <laughs> Apple TV, <laughs> yep. which could be a, could be an issue. Uh, I will say a couple of things I've heard about this is 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 Belichick does not come off well at all. Uh, Bill Belichick. Okay. That which does I, not surprise me. Yeah. And he's one of the few people that seems to get angrier as the winning continues. But like, you look at Andy Reid, he seems a lot more loose and funnier than he Absolutely. was in Philly. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? But he's also been winning. Belichick got like, I don't know. You know what? Like, it's just one of those things, too. I think you see it not just in sports. You see it in a lot of aspects of life. Like, somebody, the boss that's been there for a while, it's like they just get old and, I don't know, just, it's like, also a different management style, more old school. Mm -hmm. More yeah, like, it doesn't more like work. coach and player aren't, uh, you, a player could not talk to the coach, address the coach, ask questions. You know, basically what the coach says, you do. So Belichick kind of reminds me of that guy who was like the old school coach. Like, if you guys don't do this, we're going to run steps. And even though it's the Saturday night before the game, you know, <laughs> right. the Patriots are running steps, and they got to play Sunday morning. He's like, it, he just seems to me like to be one of those guys. And and I think he is. But I think also in sports, you got to evolve, right? you got to mm -hmm. change. You can't yeah. Look, I yeah. think you got to do it in a lot of aspects of life. But when you work for giant corporations, they don't get rid of the old dudes. 
right? Yeah. Or they got to retire yeah. or something. So, like, people could sit there. You you go, I mean, look, at our industry. I go blue in the face and telling people stuff. People don't want to mm-hmm. listen, right? I got the longest-running podcast on this station, right? And when I started it, it was like, nobody cares. Nobody cares today. about podcasts. Like, blah, blah, blah. Now, look at our company. All we advertise is podcasts, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. right? P- pay people a lot of money. <laughs> For you they, to not they, listen. They, they right. Do. They do. Yeah. So just right. So, but I'm saying you can see it in our aspect that some some of those people need to evolve or or go. Oh, okay, we should do this. Yeah. What? Uh, what Whereas, like, like, look at Andy Reid, who has changed completely. I always bring up Harbaugh in in Baltimore. Like, he had an offense. He had a way he ran it. They drafted Lamar Jackson. And he said, changed okay, everything. We got to overhaul this offense. Coach in the NFL, you get a chance to play for him. Who do you not want to play for? Who do you want to play for? So, like look, current coaches? Yeah. So you look at like someone like Mike Tomlin. He's going to be a hard ass, but I also think he's going to benefit you in your career. You and, don't have a losing and, season and, even when your team still, isn't good. And still be an approachable coach that can help you in life situations, that can help you. His players he, seem to like him for the most part. Yeah, I mean, I would best. take either of the Harbaugh's. Yeah, Harbaugh. Like, Harbaugh. Yeah, like Jim can be kind of annoying, but, but the like, players we talk about at, wherever he goes, every player stands behind him and goes, I love this dude, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. And, so and he's I'm, a weird dude. I think he's like Mike Leach, where he's a, he's a little odd, but his players love him. John Harbaugh, every player says good things about him, right? Just, he's fair, and one thing about him, you can be who you are. I need you to perform on the field. Right. I don't yeah. care about anything I mean, until this year, I would have said Pete Carroll, which I think yeah, a sure. lot yeah, of guys... That's a great answer. And Pete Carroll, look, Pete Carroll had a completely different style, but I do think even for Pete... I think some of that stuff over the years, people were kind of like, eh, all right. Right. It's the same yeah. thing. You well, know what I mean? Like, I love his style, but his style of leadership didn't change a ton. So I think the one coach, Belichick excluded, he's not a coach right now. Sean, Sean Payton. Sean, Payton, never Sean play Payton and Denver would be the one guy that I would. And look, when Russ left, obviously there was a lot going on. Yeah. But, it, but as time went on, I started to root for Russ more because of Sean Payton. Right, because his balls was... Because I felt yeah. like, man, he didn't, you know, like, that, that was kind of an essay thing to do. And just the way, like, his initial press conference, like, he basically just kind of dressed him down even before they took the field. So I thought it was a real ass move. I would say the coach in Miami. I think that would be the guy. Those that guys I, love playing for him. Oh, right? uh, McDonald? Yeah, or Mc, whatever his name. Mike. McVay, oh, no. What's his down. name? He's the young guy with the glasses. Yeah. He's got yeah. the cool McDonald's, shoes. But he just, Great sweatpants. Yeah, yeah, he just seems like a good guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I think that would be the, the, the coach I'd want to play for. And then Peyton would be the one I'd be like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> McVay's another good coach. Well, Belichick, another thing, too, is like, I don't know. Remember, what was it, uh, two seasons ago when he was like, we're not going to have an offensive coordinator. Like, if he hadn't won all those titles, and I think a lot of that had to do with Brady. I think that was proven. Right. It's just like any other coach. And I'm like, what in the hell are you saying? Like, I remember <laughs> us, the three, like, uh, and Mike, the four of us talked about it. And we're like, I know he's the greatest coach of all time, apparently. But, like, that seems very odd. That's and a bad shocking, idea. it was terrible. You yeah. know, even Bob Kraft said I had to make a choice. Belichick or Brady. And I picked Belichick. And he says now, he's like, I picked wrong. Yes. Yeah, you sure yeah, did. Exactly. Yeah. And, like, look. Winning cure, the old saying, right? Winning cures all, which it does. It does. But even for Tom Brady, he got to a point where he's like, all right, whatever. And then he went and won another one. I'll go yeah, win but, somewhere else. Yeah, but that, 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 that team does deserve a documentary or a show based for on sure, for the sure. years they had, their success. I mean, that's going to be tough to replicate. Yeah, they had 20 yeah, years of it. And, and again, to me, there's like, there's almost like two versions of that team, right? There's the first one that wins a couple of them. And then you kind of forget that period where it's like, it, like that's what I'm saying, like Belichick and Brady are the only two constants. Somebody else is there. But like Brewski and all those guys are gone. They have Randy Moss. They have a lot of good mm-hmm. dudes. Branch. But they, and they go to Super Bowls. They just don't win them. Don't win them, right. Right. And then there's kind of the second round where they start winning again and you got to watch them beat the Seahawks, which sucks. Well, what you need to do is bring out, uh, what's, what, what's his face out of retirement? The guy who owns the wineries uh, from Wazoo. Ryan Leaf? No, the guy, Bledsoe. 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 Because right. if you just put Bledsoe in, whoever he, your next quarterback and he, is, and he st- 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 yeah, staggers out of the game, then you, you're gonna you're gonna take off. Your team's gonna do great. Yeah, I know it happened to him twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will say to Bledsoe's credit, I've seen him do a lot of interviews. Apparently, by the way, his wine wins a ton of awards. It does. It's super good. But Bledsoe, to his credit, I like the fact that he talks about how much it bugged him and how great yes. Tom. Brady, like now he's right. like, look, I'm past it now. But he's like, yeah, I just. You know me. I, I'm truthful to a fault sometimes. I, I just get annoyed when people are like, oh, it's not a big deal or whatever. I mean, it's like, look, 
when there's players that don't have championships, i.e. Dan Marino, mm-hmm. right? Like, I always say this. It's kind of funny. People might not remember this. But John Elway had been to a Super Bowls. He was in that same thing. It was like, and then when he finally won a Super Bowl, it was like, I was lying. My career would have been complete. Yeah. It's basically like, now all those guys that didn't win want to have a bunch of records. Like, what are we supposed to say now? Yeah, I, I mean, look, he won too. And I felt like any football, if you join the NFL, your goal is to win a Super Bowl. Period. Right? No matter Correct. the like, So any player that says, well, I played 12 seed, never won a Super Bowl, it's okay. No, it's not. I that, mean, I that think it's exactly a little different you if you play, you know, you play 12, 13 years. You take a lot of pride in that. But I think it's no diff- doubt. I think it's different for those quarterbacks, though, like Marino that has all those all these records. records right. Like, I think that's kind of the worst thing when you have all that going on. And then it's like, but you don't have a ring. And eventually I mean, look, your records like Charles, will be broken. The difference, if you won a Super Bowl, no matter who thinks about it, that, that's yours. It's like Charles Barkley. Mm-hmm. I mean, that guy was phenomenal, right? But, like, he doesn't have a ring. And it's like, that's always going to bug him. But also... Also, Shaq brings it up a lot. Yeah, yes, he sure. does. <laughs> Either way, in 07, when the Patriots blew a chance for the perfect season, like, Tom Brady's just honest about it. He says, we were crushed. I was crushed. My teammates were crushed. Coaches were crushed. This was our history-making game. Uh, he said, uh, he goes, uh, when talk about getting back on the bus, not a sound, pitch dark. There was no sleep. And then also, I like uh, Brady is still haunted by the helmet catch made by David Tyree. Quote, what the F, man? How the F did you do that? It's a million to one. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm glad to hear him say that. Not only that, but just when you realize how many tackles that Eli Manning, who is not an elusive quarterback, broke to make that throw. He's not Russell Wilson. He's not a guy that's crazy. Oh, they had him dead to rights. They should have said it. They had five times. And he's well, Eli Manning's another one on the other side. Like, without those two, I'm not positive he is a Hall of Famer. No. But he's got two titles. So it's Just like, like his brother. Yeah, it's hard right. to take it away. Well, it's... Peyton had all the records. But remember, Peyton, Peyton Manning for years, right? Like, Peyton Manning for years couldn't win a Super Bowl. Remember, he, he never won a Heisman, which... Charles Woodson was awesome, but you could still make an argument Peyton Manning deserved that high. Sure, sure, sure. Right? And then what's it? Two years later, Tennessee actually wins a national championship with T. Martin. So it's just like when he finally got one, it's like, all right, all right. Then he gets a what? Mm-hmm. Did he get one or two in Denver? One in Denver, one in Indy. And apparently his older brother was twice the quarterback of either one of his younger brothers. But you never know. Because he got injured. Because he got a neck injury. And same basic thing that happened to Peyton Manning with his fused neck. Right. They just could not. He was not able to get out there and medically be cleared to play. It was dangerous. All right. So now I got a list of the, and I thought opinion, these are the 10 most watched TV finales of all time. Interested to see which ones you guys have watched. Do you have any guesses before I start reading the list? MASH. Uh, yeah, all right, one. MASH is Sein- number one. Seinfeld. <laughs> Seinfeld is... All right, so MASH is number one. That was 1983. 105 million people watched it. Four on the list is Seinfeld. That was 1998. Okay, hold on. Give me a second. 76 million people watched it. I love Seinfeld. Missed it. As I see Mike Messina catch a line drive off his face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Friends? Friends is number five. That's okay. That was in 04. I definitely watched, so I watched that one. I've seen the Seinfeld ending. I can't remember, 93, I'm 12. I feel like my parents probably had the Cheers finale on, because I remember they watched it. It can't be Sopranos. So that is one of them, okay. It can't be Sopranos, because that was paid. So if you're paying for it, All right, number a- three on the list, you're just, you're not going to get. I, I'll give you a hint. This show, to me, it was 1967. This show is more popular as a movie. Twilight Zone? No the Fugitive. Way. Oh, wow. I, I didn't realize it was I, that yeah. highly rated. Of, I knew it was a TV yeah. show back in the People day. People must have loved it. Yeah, guy I had a fake him. arm. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get them, Ted. <laughs> so, number 10, these are the uh, 10 most watched TV finales of all time. Number 10 on the list was Home Improvement, 1999. Okay. okay. All right. Tim Allen. Sense. Yeah, I definitely watched that one. Love that show. Uh, next on the list was Family Ties. Really? Yeah. That was a popular show. Yeah. I enjoyed the show. I don't even remember that they, quote unquote, had a finale. I just thought it just ended. Okay. Uh-huh. Alex P. Keaton. Alex P. Keaton, that's right. From a great uh, boy band song. <laughs> Michael J. Fox was Alex P. Keaton. R- they say that in the song. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's a horrible song. Somebody will get it. Uh, all right. You guys will know this one. This is number eight on the list. 1979, this finale came out. Is it a sitcom or a drama? It's a sitcom that had spinoffs and they would never make it today. 
Three's company. Soap? All in the family. Oh, oh God. Family. Yeah, you're right. They would never make that today. Uh, number seven on the list. This was 1992. Uh, this show is back on the air. They they did Full a... Full House. Nope. Uh, Magnum... Or my bad. Magnum P.I. was nine, or 88. 92 was the Cosby show. Oh, okay. Yeah. They wouldn't make that now either. No. They would not make <laughs> yeah, that now. Not with him. They would change the name. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, uh-huh. everybody but Cosby show. Exactly. <laughs> Cosby. Yeah, that's why. I thought you guys were still going somewhere else. Like, no, man, no. they still make shows like All that. All him. All him, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty bad. And it's it's also like, yeah, that show went off the air in 92. Like, Damn. You know, I, like, there's a whole generation of people like me, right? Like, that show was on in the 80s and early 90s. Like, It was a great show. Yeah, like and it was just like he was like he was, it was, he was like America's dad, yep. and it was awesome and everything. And then you read all that horrible, horrible things this man did. You're just like, Jesus. God, well, he the had show it. was fine. The fact that he went out and did stand up and basically criticized young black everybody. Men yeah, the fact that they're you know pull your pants up and blah 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 blah. But wait, blah, what are you doing? Yeah, you really shouldn't be <laughs> beating down anybody. Yeah, like, right. You're not the litmus test of you know purity. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, he, he said a lot of stuff. But he had the platform, too, because yes, of the Cosby did. show. Yes, he did. He did. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You're listening to The Men's Room. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger, offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. In the fast paced world of attacking, speed is everything. And that's where the Furon 7 Plus shines. Engineered for accuracy and precision at a rapid pace, it's your secret weapon on the pitch. Experience overall comfort and precise striking, even in the game's fastest moments. The nylon outsole, with its V shaped stud configuration, is designed for firm ground, giving you the grip you need to outmaneuver your opponents. Step up your attacking game and learn more and purchase the Furon at NewBalance.com. Love the flexibility of working in all sorts of places? Well, working on the go seamlessly requires a strong network like T-Mobile. We have America's largest 5G network, so whether you're on a video call at the park or uploading large files at a coffee shop, we have the 5G speed you need. Whatever takes you on the go, T-Mobile's got you covered. Find out more at T-Mobile.com slash network today. Coverage not available in some areas. See 5G device coverage and access details at T-Mobile.com. Over 13,000 people in the Seattle area are homeless. Brian is helping to make a difference through Seattle's Union Gospel Mission. I was addicted to meth, sleeping in my car, and I couldn't take it anymore. I got off drugs, earned a bachelor's degree in theology, and have almost completed a master's in counseling. Today, I'm the director of outreach at the mission. And grace will lead me home. To hear more, volunteer or donate, visit UGM.org. All right, here we go to Germany where a man's best friend isn't a man's best friend anymore. Some people want to know, when it comes to going to church, can I dress like a whore? Believe it or not, if not for leap year, we'd have Christmas in July. California holds an auction if you're looking to get high. And Zillow announces it's expensive to live in Seattle. And it's time for your headline. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my cock. Live. It is not my cog. Miles, we'll start with the story you just said. Don't worry, everyone. You are not imagining things. Seattle is, in fact, a complete ripoff. The Emerald City. If you're a resident here, you need more income to, quote, comfortably afford a home than locals of any other metropolitan area nationwide outside of California. Keep in mind, that includes Boston, New York City. So Zillow released an affordability report finding that there are seven major housing markets where a household's income must be, how much do you think, Ted, or more to, quote, comfortably afford a typical home? Wait, is this for any market or our market? Our market, they're saying there's seven markets. Seattle is one of them. We're one of the more expensive ones. Seven major housing markets where a household's income must be blank a year to, and again, quote, comfortably afford a typical home. Typicals are dead average house. You're not living extravagant. I don't know, 100? 
$200,000. Seattle residents must make $213,984 annually to comfortably afford a home. That according to Zillow. The most expensive four U.S. markets, they're all in California. You got San Jose, San Francisco, L.A., San Diego. How much are they putting down? I don't know. Now keep in mind, following Seattle are New York City and Boston. New York City and Boston are well, notoriously we expensive. Well, we pay a lot because of the weather. That, that's exactly what it is, all the good weather. Yeah. Now, the opposite end of the major metro spectrum features Pittsburgh, where you only need to make fifty-eight grand a year. Memphis, 69, which is crazy, because if you've ever been to Pittsburgh and Memphis, take Pittsburgh. you would take Pittsburgh. Every what? day of the week. Every Pittsburgh's city. done a great no, job Pittsburgh's with that city. Awesome. They really have. Uh, Cleveland, 70 grand. Not a bad city. We make fun of it because I hate the Browns, but a fine city. New Orleans, 74000 which is crazy. And Birmingham, seven, just under $75,000. Out of those, I'm I'm taking Pittsburgh. I'd take Every Pittsburgh day of the out week. of each one of them. I think I'd go Pittsburgh, oh, New Orleans, Cleveland, and then Birmingham, Memphis. Just flip a coin. It doesn't matter. And honestly, like I have some friends that recently moved over to Pittsburgh from here. Mm-hmm. Like, the, But it... It's not that far off from, I mean, not less rain, but like there's oh, mountains there. Very right. similar. It's not that, like, like living in Seattle, it's not that hard to leave the city and be right. out in the sticks and enjoy it. That is true. You, you don't think there's, you know, water in the area, but you're on three major rivers. Yeah. So there is water activity. There, there is really is. Yeah. But there's a lot of, so there, when you think you're landlocked, you're in Pittsburgh, you got a lot of options. Now, Steelers fans, I want you to understand, I still hate the Steelers, but the city of Pittsburgh itself, a farm place. You got to see where the Monongahela meets the Allegheny to form the Ohio. Typically, uh, the Monongahela, one of the uh, only t- one of two rivers in the world that flow north, right? Right. All right. Yeah. That in the Nile River. Everything that comes from West Virginia is this dark brown oh, God. cloud really? of crap, and then it meets this beautiful blue green river, the Allegheny, and there's this split in the middle. And you can see where they meet. I'm guessing. Oh, the dirt meets the clean, and then it <laughs> forms the Ohio River. It is the damnedest thing you'll ever see. In other news, we go to Germany where a man suffered a horrifying ideal this week when his pet dog, about the size of a Jack Russell Terrier, bit off his penis Oh, and ate it. Neighbors alerted police on account of the dog's incessant barking coming from the man's home around 2 a.m. Upon arriving at the property, the first responders, they heard pained groans coming from inside. At this point, they broke down the door and that's where they found a 66-year-old man and his dog. Now, police quickly realized that the life, that man's life was in danger. He was rushed to the hospital. The man's penis was not recovered from the scene. Now, the victim has also been able to unable to provide information due to his health. But according to officials, the most likely hypothesis being considered is that the dog was the cause of the man's injuries. But according to the police chief, quote, one hypothesis is that the dog bit off his penis and ate it. The wound would be consistent with a bite wound, but it's also possible it was a sex accident or a crime. Oh. Uh-huh. Although the incident occurred on Monday night, police are going public with the case just now in an appeal for a witness. The dog bit off and ate his penis. That is not man's best friend. It also seems odd, I don't know, that you're just not wearing pants around your dog. I find that very odd. I mean, maybe when I get up in the morning or go to bed at night, but after that, no. All right. There's been a push to, quote-unquote, stop the madness of changing our clocks back and forth for daylight savings time, but we can't stop doing leap years. So today is, in fact, the 29th of February, a day that we only get once every four years, mostly. So have you ever wondered what would happen if we just didn't do this? It might be a little bit more dramatic than you think. So it takes the Earth 365.24 days to orbit the sun. That's 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 56 seconds. Those extra hours actually create enough time for one new day every four years. Now, if we did not add today, February 29th, the calendar would shift about 25 days every century. Meaning that after about 600 years, Christmas would actually be in July. In the sense that it would be in the middle of the summer. At least in the northern hemisphere, we would not have an early winter Christmas again for another 850 years. Wow. So basically, leap years are vital to keep the months in sync with the seasons and annual events and all that kind of thing. Now, people have recognized the need for leap years for thousands of years. And the current Gregorian calendar has been in use since the late 1500s. If you did not know, the length of the day is also periodically adjusted by inserting a leap second because of variations in Earth's rotation. But unlike leap days, leap seconds are not added on a regular schedule because those variations are not as predictable. The last time a leap second was added 
December 31st, 2016. Mm. I don't recall that. So, I do. It was wild. Ah, uh, yeah, the crazy. lead second. Crazy. It was, man. It was crazy. crazy year, 2016, that extra and second. And now, uh, both you gentlemen had to go to church when you were children, correct? Yeah. So the question's been asked, what can you wear to church? Do people still wear their Sunday's best? So they actually had a, can I wear this to church question? And people have asked on sites like Reddit. All right, so Crocs, yes or no? No. Uggs. Sure. A football jersey. Yes, because it's Sunday. It depends on where you are. Yes, yes. Jeans. Yes. Yes. Ripped jeans. Yes. Yeah. Jorts. No. A mini skirt. Yes. Cowboy boots. Yes, sure. Cowboy hat. Yes. I just take take it off inside. Right, exactly, exactly. Band logo t-shirts. I would say no. Okay. How about a Santa hat in late December? Yes. Okay. Flip-flops? No. Sweatpants? No. Sweatpants? No. Ah. Man, mm-hmm. that's so tough. Fashion just changed so yeah. much. Uh, they say the goth look, in other words, all black. Sure. How about uh, a Halloween costume because someone let their kid go as Darth Vader? If it's a kid, yes, sure, yes, yes. as an adult. Uh, leggings and or yoga pants. Sure. A crop top. I guess. A bi- uh, crop top might be a little much. A bikini and a kilt. That is what people are asking. Good times. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale. With Hot Buys, your choice of color starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases. And shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval. No minimum purchase required. Minimum monthly payment, down payment, tax, and delivery may be required. See store for details. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out, yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and not a yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. This spring, break away and visit Fort Collins, Colorado. Seeking a culinary escape? Local restaurants offer exclusive specials during Great Plates of downtown Fort Collins. Love live music? Foco MX is a two-day festival with hundreds of Colorado artists. Eager to be entertained? The Lincoln Center hosts comedian Mike Berbiglia and an evening with John Cusack. Plan your travels at visitfortcollins.com. Fort Collins, where adventure casual is a way of life. 